Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for October 23rd, 2019. Um, we're opening the meeting at, at 5.40, uh, just to have a discussion before our agenda. Um, this meeting will be recorded by FCAT. Um, and uh, we're holding the meetings at Deerfield Municipal Offices at Main Meeting Room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. So, welcome. <coughs> so I really just wanted to... The meeting was, I thought was going to be scheduled at 5, um, but then the agenda came out and it's at 6, so I, I've got to be somewhere at 6.45, and we have a hearing <coughs> for our sewer rates at 6.45, so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit beforehand yes. about the sewer and our plans moving forward, and uh, we had a meeting this morning I can report on um, a little bit about where we're going with the sewer projects and yeah. all, and um, catch you up to speed. I know you were working, Dave. Yeah. So, um, and then we could, you know, hit on a couple other things, and then. Well, we uh, certainly could do the consent agenda and everything. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. You yeah. want to just do that? Yeah. Why don't we get started on yeah. that? Yeah. So the consent agenda is a one-day liquor license request for Deerfield Academy for the Deerfield Club of New England event on October 29th. There's also meetings of October 23rd, 2018, September 5th, 2019, September 11th, 2019. September 25th, 2019, and September 30th, 2019, and then review and sign the NEV loan documents. And I know that's in the consent agenda, but I just wanted to speak to that a little bit, and that is, um, as we all know, we, we purchased the, um, the property back at the Oxford Pickle uh, parcel at the uh, special town meeting a few weeks back, and this is really just um, authorizing Barbara to get a short-term loan for only six months. For six months. She got a really good rate of 1.880 uh, for six months. We have enough money in the budget to cover the interest, and by six months, that'll come right around uh, April, and by that time, we'll have an, an idea of, you know, do we have interest in the property or how we may want to continue paying if we're still owning it by around town meeting. We'll have right. a better idea about free cash, all that kind of stuff. So um, so really, that's that's what that is. The amount is, um, the total amount is three. $362,152.53. The principal is $358,780. The interest is $3,372.53. So that is that. So take a motion to approve the consent agenda. Um, any changes in the minutes at all? Do you have any? No, I, I, I hadn't read the 30th. I, I didn't yep, get the packet. Do you want to take a minute to do that? I have to abstain from the one on the 18th. The one on the 18th? The, the, okay. The October 23rd, I mean. Uh, um, October, I, yeah, 2018. I make a right. motion to approve the minutes of um, October 23rd, 2018. Second. Uh, September 5th, September 11th. Second. September Second. 25th and September 30th Second. of 2019. Okay. All those in favor, any further discussion? Nope. Aye. 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 Um, so Dave abstains on this one. From the, from I make the a motion to approve the Deerfield Club of New England event for October 29th. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've already done the review in a minute. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, any, any, uh, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's good. Um, I'll just hit this real quick. The Board of Health um, announcements for, um, we have one more flu clinic, which will be this Saturday here in this room, um, October 26th. Is it this Saturday? Yes. yes. Already. Um, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., uh, the Deerfield Town offices. So please bring your insurance card. Um, I had talked to Lisa. She had sent me a note that it's really hard getting missed this year. Um, so we have shots, and I think low and, and high dose um, but she was able to secure a couple, like just a few missed ones, not a lot. So, um, so it's for all ages, uh, quadrivalent injectable formulas. So, um, if there was an emergency, I think she has one or two missed um, on hand. And and much. this is this is the more effective flu shot. So please, um, it's going please. around. People are dropping we're, like flies. Actually, right <laughs> we're already having um, reports of flu. 
Um, the hospitals are reporting it um, at my Homeland Security meeting. They're are they? Already, yeah, they already have emissions. So please um, get your flu shot. It takes like 10 days to um, develop immunity. And from based on what was happening in Australia um, over the summer, it was their winter, um, that's, it's a terrible, um, you mm. know, flu season. So please get your flu shots. Yes, please. Have you gotten yours? I have not yet, but I'll probably do it Saturday. Yeah, I was okay. planning to do it at the doctor's, but I'll probably be here for that anyway. So. All right. Well, you really should. And do that. You yeah. too, Dave. Seriously. Yeah. We can't right. afford to be sick. No. We see too many people. Um, um, so under, under old business would be an update on the completion of the wastewater management asset plan, wastewater treatment plan, secondary clarifier project, and next steps. We'll go into this, I think, later when Dave gets here, but just in case I was gone, I wanted to kind of give an update on that a little bit. Sure. Um, so we had a meeting this morning yep. at the plant. Um, uh, Dave Prickett was there with Tony, our engineer, and um, Kevin Scarborough, S Skip Olmstead, uh, Keith Millen and uh, Carolyn was there and we um, we talked about a variety of things and, and really what's happening now when we got that first bid, um, the bids back, we only got the one bid, we knew it was high and we yeah. kind of rejected that. So we did that last meeting. So um, in the meantime, Keith has come up with a way to cost effectively refurbish the square rectangular original clarifiers that are there. He sent us some pictures there. There's wasps nests in them. It, oh, they're just yeah, in such bad shape. But he's he's got the motors pulled out. They're working on the motors now. They're getting all that stuff updated. And, and so we're hoping that if we can get the consent um, the consent uh, form from DEP adjusted a couple months out, we would love to have in, put in our bid um, that will hopefully it will go out in the next couple of weeks would be or November 1st, I think was going to go out the um, yep. first week in November. So that would be to have this project done between June and August, I think, or April and or May and August. So that those are like the lowest flow times. And he thinks he can handle that that bypass treatment for the clarifier through those those three square clarifiers in that time frame and not risk too much. Um, so if we can get if we can get those up running for pretty short money, we're talking you know under fifty thousand or right around fifty thousand to do that. It's mm -hmm. a whole lot less than the other. What we heard from the marketplace is that a lot of people shied away from that. They didn't want that responsibility of doing that bypass treatment. So clarifying. So Keith would take that over. He'd be responsible for it. We'd go back out to bid for just changing the clarifier with the part we we thought we wanted to use the clarifier parts we want to use and hopefully get a better number yep. just, just to do that. So, okay. so we're hoping to move forward on that. Um, and then um, I had been on the phone yesterday with uh, Steve from USDA. He's the engineer at USDA, Steve Schreiber. He um, was really pushing us to get moving and um, get going with the, with the project, the larger project. And I think tonight, we'll be discussing and, and I would recommend moving forward with, with um, DPC to just do the first phase, the 11-4, not the $19 million project, but just the 11-4, because that's the only amount of pro that's the only project we have funding for at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and they felt if we got this moving, it's much more favorable by I think June of next year, um, we would then um, have enough ducks in a row and enough stuff moving forward in design that we would then go back out for the night, the other half of the project to USDA. Yep. They're very critical. Um, um, Rebecca, who runs it now, is totally different than the last person who ran it, Dan, uh, USDA down there. And she really, before it was like, let's get the money out. And it really didn't matter how quickly you got the project done. Things have changed a lot between Washington and, and this office, and they want to see these projects started. Um, they, they've got the money. They want to see it done. They've Yeah, they so, suck, suck it back. If yes, they we're very concerned about that. So we really just want to get rolling on this. Uh, USDA is looking over. What I would like to do is move forward with the, have Dave put a proposal together and a scope on the project, and then, um, and then have us negotiate that. Um, and, and USDA is going to look over that too and make sure it's in line with what they think is accurate. 
um, since they're the bank. And, um, and then so we'll have th those eyes on it. Hopefully some private, public-private partnerships will look at it as well because we have another, another project we, we have to do at the other end of town. We're hoping that maybe um, we can get them to kind of put their eyes on the project as well and mm -hmm. just get this whole, whole thing moving. Um, so we'll start with the first 11-4 come back in June if we're prepared to, to start with the, the next phase, which will be called tonight phase two, right? It, all along it's been phase three. We've been doing one, three. Yep. So just to get it clarified t from now on, tonight going forward, it'll be one, two will be also the plant there, and then three, we move up to Old Deerfield, hopefully with some help from, from other uh, nonprofits uh, to look at it with us. Um, so that's kind of where we're we're at at the moment, and then rates. I just we wanted to make about. sure you knew, you felt comfortable because what because Keith feels pretty comfortable that he has a handle on the on the tank, you know the new the old tanks. Yeah. So he's going to handle and take the responsibility of treatment in the temporary, mm -hmm. um, and that will and for he thinks it's going to be less than fifty thousand dollars. So that's a really good deal. Mm -hmm. Then we're so we're going to go out to bid, and then within the next week or two. So by 1st of November, anyway, it will be yeah. done. Okay. I'll be out. And that means that you get the first week of December, um, the bids will be back in, and, and that will be for the clarifier. And then it should be able to be done in the um, summer, mm -hmm. which is the lowest, driest. But we want to extend the, um, the, the order, DEP's order, out just another month or two, just in mm -hmm. case. Just in case you get a bad we've gotten delayed. Irene or who knows yeah. comes through. Right. And yeah. Get a so, bad um, you know, it's but it should be okay. And in the meantime, we're moving forward with Dave um, on the the eleven million. Yeah. And only the eleven million. But the idea is to get enough engineering so we can apply in the summer, which would probably be June, May or June would be we would apply for the next seven million okay. or eight million. I, I just want to make sure that yes. you know we should be saving around three hundred fifty four hundred thousand on what was originally the first project. I want to make sure that Dave is looking at yes. putting in a dumping station. We we discussed that this morning. We discussed because that you know that, I think that's critical mm -hmm. because we have, you know, almost 70% of the town that has on septic. Mm -hmm. And all that is going out. And, you know, I know there was some discussion about free for the residents, but. Well, let's evaluate it. I agree. We have to evaluate it. And there could be a potential. Yes. A small revenue source there with that as well. And. Which would offset that that cost of that. Exactly. Station. And, and I, we, we brought that up this morning and said uh, because it's not in the 11-4, mm -hmm. but it could be worked into the, the next phase. Right. So we said whatever we can save here and then roll around. And I said, well, while yeah. you're doing this, can you also do a second one? And he assured me that whatever we do on the 11-4 project won't interfere or cost us more to do that in the second phase. Yeah. So we said roll that into the design of the second phase so that we can at least evaluate it during these months, make sure it's cost effective, make sure... It, it fits, yep. and then we just go forward with that. So that's definitely on our radar to do that for okay. sure, because I think it's important okay. as well. Well, it's um, important for the, the townspeople, I think. I, I agree, and agreed. And, and we said we would look at that, and I want to honor that and do that. Yeah. So. I, I have been committed to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, whether, I mean, if it's outrageously expensive, obviously we yeah. wouldn't do it. But we just got to evaluate. I, I can't. The estimates I've heard on that are around 500000 Let's yeah. Let's look for sure. And it seems and like see. long term, if we're doing renovation for long term, you know, 20 yeah, years or 40 for years, something. a long-term thing. We're we not should looking do for something for just tomorrow. No, yep. no. I, because I don't want to address this That again. has been done too many times, and we can't keep on doing that. Yep. You know, we've already had a lot of holes in our feet. We don't have to shoot ourselves anymore. Right. Right. That's true. Yeah. And um, I, I got good feedback from Steve Schreiber about um, working with Dave Prickett moving forward. He... Um, we talked about the possibility of doing an RFQ and moving forward and looking for another engineer. He thought that was um, um, not advised based on the, would probably take us several months to do that. It mm -hmm. may even take a year by the time we get into construction. And he said, you, you've got an excellent person. 
they may not be the cheapest guy in the block, and they're certainly not the most expensive, but they're very responsive in all the projects they've worked with them on. They said well, they've, they've come across others that are in, in, cheap I, and they, they're come and gone. But, you know, just, you know, just to kind of clarify things, Dave, by not submitting paperwork like he's supposed to have been in a timely manner, mm -hmm. has soured a number of people in town. And that's where, you know, a lot of the discussion has been that has derailed some of the things. I, I, and I think just, that's a misnomer, but I agree. Yeah, people have said that, yeah. but it, it's more on, I would, I would argue that point. And, and I don't want to get into it tonight, but yeah. I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Because um, I think on our part, we've said, hold off, we're not ready for okay. this. Well, I wasn't on the board at the Understood. time, but I just, you know, I'm just... I know that's out there, and that's what people think has happened. we just got to make sure we're addressing it, that's that, all. On top of it. And USDA is going to be run on top of it, yeah. too, because there's a, there's a funding schedule to yep. go, and it all needs to, needs to be addressed. So. Okay. Um, Good. So, so do you want to vote that? Um, uh, if, unless you wanted to hear, you know, Dave is here and James is here. Um, if you, do you want to bring them up early and have a quick discussion yeah. on that? Why don't we I, do that? Because um, I, I, I want to vote that and Bob Decker's okay. appointment onto the Council of Aging. So um, I'll just reiterate, it's about six, six, uh, six minutes or four minutes of six o'clock. We started our meeting just a little early. Um, I, I end up having it be somewhere at 645 and our agenda is kind of getting flipped if you're okay with us flip-flopping a little bit. really sorry uh, to make you wait. Long, but, Just about 10 minutes. Uh, I was in the impression meeting was starting at 5, but it's, it wasn't, so it was 6. And then uh, that was my fault for, for not catching that early, but um, Dave, Dave Prickett is here and James is here as well, and um, I would just welcome them up to the table. Do you have a moment? We're kind of flipping things up a little bit here. To um, I've got a chorus to watch. <laughs> so. I've got to go see my son tonight, so I want to. You, you need to leave at six thirty. We'll be fine. Yeah, I think we'll be good. So yep. um, we've had a li we opened a meeting a little bit early just so we could talk a little bit ahead of time if I okay. had to run out. And I, I explained to Dave what we did this morning. Yep. Um, we were, met at the treatment plan. I'll, I'll explain to everybody again that we met there to talk about uh, you know our rates and what projects we're working on, the emergency secondary clarifier. Um, the issue where we ran into a snag on the high bid and the only bid we got and we kind of developed a plan to go forward on that where um, Keith, our operator, is rehabbing our old rec rectangular original clarifiers just to kind of get us through that temporary process. We want to make sure that um, we say thank you for that. Yeah, that was you know, it's, really... it's jumping ahead and taking initiative and trying right. to find a solution when we were up against the wall on that. So I've got a copy of uh, just a one page handout. Oh, if thank you. Love, okay. love that. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's a copy of the, the final report. Oh, great. Document. Great. Yes, uh, you will. Thanks. Yes, yes, absolutely. I don't know. I'll just leave these on the corner if anyone wants to grab a couple. So do you want to, do you want to hit yeah, the, which, hit the sheet? Where would you guys yeah. like to start? This you isn't the hearing right. part, right? It is not. Okay. No, we're just, we so were So then just, we'll work off this agenda. Yeah, this is fine. You know, we were prepared to talk about uh, kind of the update for the wastewater asset management project. Um, yep. You know, that's the project that started last fall, went into the winter, was the basis for the first two projects that you sought appropriation for. And I think we just wanted to recap for the public what the implementation plan Yes. was as it's evolved mm -hmm. yes and that was one of the reasons that um we had tabled the updated draft report to right. the final uh to get through the town meetings such that you weren't giving dep a report that basically said we're going to do a and then you can't because you don't have the money in place so yep. make a long story short um the first recommendation was move forward with the secondary clarifier upgrade that mm -hmm. was the million dollar appropriation from last spring that's yes. ongoing i'll come back yep. to that in a second yep um, we had presented in the planning document uh, last fall and last winter a four-phase plan. And at the time, the four-phase plan was initially, phase one was uh, do the first set of upgrades at South Deerfield, followed by phase two, do the first set of upgrades at Old Deerfield. Um, after a lot of discussion um, and significant input from Keith and elected appointed interested parties in town, we decided to flip flop phases two and three. So right now what you've done uh, from your annual town meeting and your September special election is appropriate the $19 million that comprise phases one and two at the South Deerfield plant. Yes. 
Okay, so just to clarify for you know, residents and people that haven't been following that uh, right. or, or living in a cave for the last nine months, right. um, you went out and you sought USDA funding for phase one, which was 11.4 million. You secured that, um, that funding, that fu you have that in possession through the form of a loan and a grant yep. and a local match. And that is the project that, you know, we're moving forward with at this time. Um, that will be the focus of the, you know, the proposed rate hearing later this evening. Exactly. If that's still on the agenda. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. So in between phases two and three, so after South Deerfield is done, but before you decide what you're going to do with Old Deerfield, we said key decision before phase three. And this'll, this is another potential change that you may decide to do. And the reason for that is do you want to upgrade the old Deerfield plant or do you want to close it, decommission it, and pump the wastewater to South Deerfield? Right. The South Deerfield upgrade, as planned, accommodates for all of that flow. Yep. So you have that flexibility should you choose to do that. So we just said, number one, look at that, update the cost at that time. That could be two years from now. That could be 10 years from now. Right. Number two, you want to explore, explore potential public-private partnerships. Yes. Are there opportunities with... Um, non-municipal uh, stakeholders in Old Deerfield or along the pipe route from point A to point B? Yep. Uh, and would those afford the town some um, creative funding finance solutions? Correct. Uh, and three, you'd have to appropriate additional funds. So right. none of the money's appropriated for Old Deerfield, just right. South Deerfield. That's correct. Yep. So that was good. an attempt at a that was Reader's good. Digest version, <laughs> you know, uh, where, thing, where things stand. So that's the update that's reflected in the, in the final report. Yep. So That's before great. I move to the clarifier, you know, are there any questions? I, I just want to make it clear to people that what our intention is, is to have the engineering in place in the summer, probably June, June-ish. Yeah, we wrote that um, milestone on there, Carolyn. Yeah. That's yep. a good, to, to your point from this morning. Right. Um, we sent funding application for phase two pending, likely June, two th I should say right. June 2020. Sorry, that's a typo. 2020, off. yep. Yep. Okay. We want to make sure that... Um, we have opportunity to have another grant. Right. Another right. shot at USDA. And it took us three or four months to get through that process, so we figure right. that keeps us kind of in the same timeline. By then, you'll be substantially complete with your design phase, right. um, ready to move into phase one of construction, and you could kind of stagger them if you chose to. Yeah. Yep. That'd be great. No, it feels like a good, a good plan rolling forward. I know it's been a lot of work, a lot of back and forth, but I feel like we have you know, with the working group. I think it out. was a good public involvement yeah. process. I mean, not everyone has agreed along the way, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, we've taken as much input as we collectively can to tailor the, the plan to Deerfield. Yep. Yep. And now you have a plan that best meets the expectations of the select board, finance, staff, et cetera. And when you were coming in, we were discussing again, uh, we, would, we would really like to see in, in between phase one and two at that plant you know, a after we've done designing phase one, but in the back of your mind, looking at that receptacle, you know, facility to take, um, yep. you know, if Greg's pumps a resident, can we, can we take it there and treat it? And I know we have to look at the cost of that, putting that in long-term revenue stream from that, you know, what, what's it gonna cost residents or not? And, you know, just, just kind of yep. get an evaluation of that. And so whatever we do in phase one, we just wanna make sure we don't yep. preclude when you, when you embark on the phase one design phase, during the preliminary design, I would call the basis a design report. It's the most important element of the yep. design phase. Um, your consultant, the town, the staff would together articulate the elements that comprise not only the phase one project, yep. but how to rough in and make sure that phase two is gonna be smooth. a smooth transition. And anytime Absolutely. you phase work at a treatment plant, you have to consider hydraulics and electrical yes. and everything else. So. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some dovetailing of those two elements at yep. that design phase, which is critical, and we would definitely take into consideration Good. septage receiving, which right. is not part of the current it isn't. project um, cost. The question is, is the capital cost relative to annualized costs and right. benefits to residents for tipping fees or yep. not? Yep. Does that make sense? I mean, Correct. We, your consultant would put that it. information together and yep. you would make, as you have in the past, an informed decision, you know, and yeah. you'd move forward. And that, that was one of the things that we heard loud and clear from the public. They were interested in at least looking at that yep. to make sure that, you know, if, if that is a possibility and it makes, you know, financial sense to do it, um, we'd love to look at that. So. Well, you have a very talented superintendent at the plant that yes. 
as we talked about this morning, you're seeing waste strengths that are sometimes two or three times what they typically are for municipal wastewater. And, yeah. you know, he's able to still do amazing things <laughs> with, with his bag of tricks. So yes. um, yep. he's got a long background at bigger plants in mid-Atlantic. So, yep. you know, you're no, well poised to, to consider something like that. Yeah, we're definitely in good, good shape yeah, for that. The, the main reason we're bringing it up now was because it's, you probably have to keep that in the back of your mind. 100%, yeah. And so that we don't have to redesign nope. everything nope. later on because nope. quite frankly as far as i'm concerned the residents of deerfield are going to want a dumping station there yeah and if and if the residents make that informed if you make mm -hmm. that decision on behalf of the residents yep you can certainly do that i mean you know it's like the analogy is you're dumping red bull into the treatment plant so you just have to make sure that everything on the liquid and sludge end of the plant can handle that concentrated yeah. Do we need you know, a mixer station yeah. first? Yeah, I mean, it's a big like, enough plant yes. that it's worth looking at. I mean, yes. it was a challenge in Hatfield because of the size of the facility, but this is a lot different just yeah. in terms of design flows. I see. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, so I'm not sure if you would like a, a vote to move forward on the design of, um, yes. of this or at least get it, you know, have a proposal from you to move forward on, on this first phase uh, in design. Yeah, um, no, I'm f I feel, pr after the meeting today, I felt pretty comfortable with yeah, the timeline. I was just concerned about the timeline, mm -hmm. but um, it's clear that we'll be able to make, you'll have the engineering ready for the end of the fiscal, federal fiscal year next year. To be able to tackle. To, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty aggressive schedule, a, but what we're trying to do is get through the design and be out to bid a year from now mm. and, and not lose all or part of a construction season. Right. Because as we talked about this morning, about you know, every year 000. that goes by, at that 4% construct, you're looking at about, you know, just under $500,000 in just annual. I know. That's the last thing we get. Right. It. It's, so I, it's I, super I just want to make sure that we are, in yeah. fact, taking care of that. Because, yeah. I mean, that's just throwing away money. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and USD is really anxious for us to get moving yeah. on that. So. Yeah. Well, I don't want to lose the grant. And no. we certainly, if we don't take care of the first grant, they're not going to give us the second yeah. grant. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things that so. Steve talked, you know, the engineer talked to us about is just, you know, he, ha he does work with communities that are, you know, difficult to work with, and it's not super excited to kind of work with them again, and we want to have that nice, smooth transition. Having a good engineer that has a lot of track record with them made me feel pretty comfortable. They, um, they really know what they're doing. So me too. So I'm that. fine. I make a motion to approve that. Uh, and I would... Second that mm -hmm. motion. Uh, any further discussion? You you would put together a proposal for us, and we could negotiate that Correct. scope, yep. scope Correct. and all. Yep. And, okay. Uh, and then I would. Um, any further discussion on that? No. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I think it's more productive. Do you, when do you think you would have a timeline on that, Dave? I would think we could put a first cut together in a couple of weeks. I mean, okay. with okay. the expectation that. Maybe Steve looks at this in parallel yes. with the town for the, the USDA that. terms and conditions Correct. and everything. And then after you're feeling comfortable that we've negotiated scope and fee, then you would send it to your council Correct. to make sure. I mean, that's kind of the typical progression. I, I agree and we've with been it. through that process before. It's just right. a different looking agreement because it's USDA funded. Correct. Yeah. I, I, just, I think we just should try to set up another meeting that maybe Dave can come look mm. at his schedule. And, Absolutely. And um, sure. just go over it. Sure. That would be great, yeah. I think. And you know, whenever you get it done. Yeah, just let us know what we're um, yeah. And so we can just look at it so that all three of us can talk about it at the same time. I okay. agree with that. Yeah, we all have to be there at um, the same time. Yep. So, all right. Um, would you like to do a quick update on the Clarifier project? Sure, yeah, that'd yes. be great. Well, we have okay. a couple we'll minutes. Keep, we'll yeah. keep it moving pretty quick. Yep, that'd be great. So, uh, Clarifier upgrade project. Um, we went through a conventional bidding process. There were two elements to the project, uh, replacement of the Clarifier mechanism, and the temporary treatment, because again, we have one clarifier. Um, we received one bid. Uh, the one bid was not what we were hoping for. Um, it was from a very good contractor, um, but they you know, were looking for an opportunity to, you know, if they can add to their workload. Um, so there are a couple things that we learned when we talked to prospective bidders that didn't bid it. Um, several of them were, I don't say scared off, but concerned about the temporary treatment and that being somewhat of an atypical thing for them outside of their wheelhouse, if you will. Um, so kind of looking to, you know, carry a lot of contingencies and things. Um, others were putting up against their aggregate bond limit, which right. sometimes happens because remember this was a relatively small project for construction. So we, we kind of digested that information, went back to the drawing board, came up with four alternatives. One was, and I think Dave, you might've mentioned this at a meeting, can we wait until the, the bigger project? 
which is absolutely the most economical if we mm -hmm. could. Uh, the downside with that alternative is if, if it does fail catastrophically and we you know, discharge you know, basically untreated wastewater to the environment, We've, we, the Royal We, have done so um, based on kind of based on a financial decision. But what Keith is doing now is cutting down on the probability of that happening, right? Keith is cutting down on the probability. It's just a matter of is that one partially failed unit going to hold up? Our recommendation is no. We'd be looking at probably two and a half years best case before <coughs> the second one would be up. It's going to be a pretty big deal with that clarifier. Mm -hmm. You know, the soils, as you all know, yes. that have done any digging in town, um, that'll be challenging um, yep. geotechnically. Uh, get that clarifier up and running. Um, so we don't recommend that alternative, but again, this is your decision. Yep. Uh, the second item was just a straight rebid. Do we go back out to bid at a slightly different time and hope for different results? I don't think so. Right. No. Nope. Um, third thing is sense. divide the replacement and the temporary treatment as two separate procurements. So, you know, the town would formally procure the, the treatment, you know, through Keith as the lead and we would play GC. Right. Um, and do the clarifier. And we were kind of working up that one when Keith rolled his sleeves up and said, let's resurrect a couple of my babies out there and, you know, do this at a time next summer when flows are low enough that we can survive. And he really does, you know, the proverbial 10 pounds in a five pound bag. Yeah. He, he's a magician uh, in is. terms of what he can do for you. So yeah. he deals with that every day. He does. Yes. He does. And <laughs> yes, he does a really does. good job. And I know, you know, in the wastewater business, there, there's often not a lot of thank yous and just calls yeah. when it stinks, but right. um, he does a really good job as, as a member of your staff. So, you know, based on that, based on the workshop we had this morning, mm -hmm. I think the inclination or the recommendation collectively of the group was alternative four makes the most sense. Yes. Rebuild yes. the, rebid the clarifier replacement. Um, and then Keith would take on the temporary treatment. Now, right. you will have some costs that Keith will procure directly, yep. you know, of resurrecting those two existing uh, uh, rectangular clarifiers, yep. but those are going to be modest in comparison of what it would be to outsource it. I so, think so, too, yeah. Um, if you bless this alternative, um, what we would do is we would go back to DEP and negotiate on your behalf for an updated administrative order, which was never finalized. They left that as a draft, which was yes, a nice courtesy to it you. It was. Uh, we would great. say the work would be done June, July, August next summer. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ACL would be closed out like October just to give us right. 60 days of float. If yep. we have another 2011 and get a Hurricane Sandy or something, who right. knows? Mm -hmm. you know, no, no. Yep. So it's a... It's a good plan. You could end up spending a little bit less money than you initially budgeted yeah. for, which would be great. That would. If, if we that can happens. save there and maybe put towards um, uh, But more importantly, you know, uh, you should. So do you want another formal, do you want us to do a formal vote? Right? I, our I recommendation so. is yeah. that the select board um, consider making a motion yeah. and voting on, you know, uh, authorizing the updated yeah. approach, which. Well, I would make I, a motion for, for phase, you know, the option three, which was to, which was to move forward with. Keep yeah. taking over responsibility for the clarifier and going out and to bid treatment. for that. Yeah. For that We're not looking for any additional itself. money for the second bidding. We can make that, that work within the current you know, project. That's awesome. That'd be Thank great. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'm, I second that motion. Any further discussion on that? All those in mm. favor? Aye. 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 So we're good on that. Mm -hmm. Great. We had those two items, and then yeah. if and when you get to the rate hearing, we're here to support you if, if needed. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Very that good. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much for jumping in on that. Thank you for your patience, guys, for allowing that. Um, did you want a quick vote for Robert Decker to be on the yes, council? Yes, because then you can just leave if you have so, to. So I would make a, a motion to appoint Robert J. Decker III to the Council on Aging beginning Second October that. 23rd. Any Second further that. discussion? All no. those in favor? Aye. 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 And then these are the, this is the liquor license from the oh, consent okay. agenda we voted. So we've got that done. Hold on the executive sessions tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Good. And. Although we have to make a decision, I think. On. Um, oh. That we well, I can come back. So if you're still oh, around, no. yeah, I don't mind. I mean, well, we can just we could just vote it if you want. Mm. So you don't have to come back. No. Okay. We should wait then. Okay. okay. We can wait. Yep. Um. Okay. Let's invite Dick Evans up. How are you? Welcome. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening. Much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm Richard Evans. I'm the uh, Northampton. I'm here on behalf of Sons Mass Inc. 
Uh, and we have a delegation here from the company. Okay. I'd like yes. to introduce them to you. That'd be wonderful. Your far left is Martine Coronado. Hey, Martine, good to see you again. The uh, cultivator director yep. at Mill Valley Road. Uh, next to him is Ali Kirkpatrick. Hi, who's Ali. From the, the company. He, he works out of Washington, D.C. Okay. Uh, this is Mark Ross, the third one there, who was a director of uh, community outreach for the company. Hello, Mark. Out of uh, Phoenix, I believe. And Dr. William Trout, who is our special guest tonight, who you'll be hearing principally from. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Dr. We are here to discuss the, pros the, the proposed uh, changes to the zoning laws that have been. Um, that have been submitted to the board and have been passed on to the um, planning board for their consideration and action. Uh, we'd like to take just a minute this evening to really fill you in on what this is all about, what the company wants to do at Mill Village Road we'll from a public right health quick. perspective. Uh, uh, so I'll just give you a little context and then I'm gonna ask Dr. Trout to, to, to talk about the public health uh, aspects then we'll hear from Mark Ross and then entertain any questions that okay. you or others may have. Um, we're talking about the site at uh, Mill Village Road, uh, which is right next to the uh, Melnick's uh, anaerobic digester. And the, the building that the company proposes to uh, erect, if, if allowed to do so, uh, and to use it for the purposes of the sea, would, be, would go in right about here. Uh, this, this is a Google site. This end of the greenhouse has been chopped off already. It's not there anymore um, um, because of the zoning setback rules. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the kinds of products that will be or hope we, the company hopes to be making at the, uh, at the production facility. Uh, basically, textures, topicals, salves, uh, ointments, lotions, oils. Um, that sort of thing. At this point, they don't propose to do any uh, uh, edibles. Uh, now, I put this slide in. Don't, please, <laughs> don't be too confused. But there are three terms that are often thrown around in this in this discussion: the term processing, the term product manufacture, and the uh, I'm sorry, the term processing, manufacture, and product preparer. That's the typo there. But the point of this slide, we've got processing, three terms, product manufacturing, and product preparation. They all mean the same thing. These terms get used interchangeably, uh, frequently, and, 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 and the regulations don't help us much. This is the technical definition of processing uh, from, the, from the regulations. This is the technical definition of manufacturing, which includes the word processing. I don't have the definition of cultivation here. It also includes the word processing. And in the proposed bylaw, we use the term product preparation and adopt the same uh, definition as uh, manufacturing. But, but just use that term. So the point is, those three words get interchanged. And as far as I'm concerned, they go ahead and keep interchanging them. It's impossible to keep them apart. So <laughs> about a month or two ago, wanting to learn a little bit more about the, the operation, I took a visit to the company's uh, uh, facility in Hancock, Maryland. And this is Hancock, Maryland, a town of about 1,500 people, the narrowest part of the state of Maryland. So this is their cultivation facility. It's very similar to 198 Mill Village. It's not a greenhouse, unlike uh, mm -hmm. Deerfield, but, but it's a Cultivation. This building here is a nondescript sort of butler building. And this is their processing building. Oh, thank you. Thank this, you this is the processing building. And what's curious is that it's right next to the high school and junior high school and in a fairly dense residential area. And this is what the inside of the building looks like, the picture on the upper left. Um, it's a quiet, clean, sort of a high-tech sort of environment there. Uh, one of the, the, uh, the, the guy who, who works, who's one of the managers at the facility in Hancock is Dave Smith, who was a former town councilor and town manager. 
in, uh, in Hancock. And these were quotes from him. I spoke, called him the other day and said, what has been your experience with the community? And he said there have been zero complaints from neighbors, no problems with the proximity of the school, no public health issues, no burden on town. It's a clean operation. That's his take on it, and we haven't heard anything to the contrary. That's a, the, the picture on the left is part of the cultivation facility that's in the big building. Uh, so with that intro, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. William Trout, who will have a few words on the uh, public health issues of, of product, cannabis product preparation. Okay. Dr. Trout. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having us here sure. today. Um, I'm the Director of Medi Medical Education for Harvest. And I think I can change these slides here. I can never do a presentation on cannabis without reminding us all of the, the history of, of this great plant, the American history. Uh, this country was, was founded on the resources that came from, from this cannabis plant, uh, including, again, the first American flag made from cannabis, first draft of our constitution written on cannabis paper, uh, part of our medical pharmacopoeia until uh, up to 1940. Pharmaceutical companies did make cannabis extracts like the one seen in that picture, um, companies like uh, Lilly and HK Mulford and, and Company. And to put a fork in the debate about whether cannabis is truly an effective medicine, in 2017 the academies, the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine did the most exhaustive research on all the medical literature out there on cannabis. And what they found is that there is absolutely significant and compelling evidence to show that cannabis is effective for treating medical conditions such as chronic pain and others. Um, but providing effective and safe medicines to patients starts with safe production of these cannabis products. Um, this is from the National Fire and Protection Association, um, again founded in 1896, and they develop s fire and safety standards and codes for industry and regulators. They've done several publications on um, cannabis processing facilities, um, some talking about the dangers that are associated with um, unlicensed home processing of, of cannabis. They've also talked about the um, relatively safe track record of these regulated licensed production facilities. And then they also, um, you can't totally see the chat, that's okay. Um, chapter 38, they have um, developed talking about marijuana growing processing and extraction facilities. Again, providing industry codes and standards as well as regulators. And these are the hazards that they've identified associated with the processing and growing of cannabis. Um, general hazards, again, not complying or following the zoning and, and permitted uses for the site. Uh, safe egress, uh, again, um, emergency safety exits. Um, compliant lighting, um, not using uh, combustible materials for building, um, fumigation and pesticide use, proper use and storage of it, uh, security issues. As far as the processing and extraction, again, using compliant electrical equipment, um, using compliant heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. Um, the last three are about the uh, solvents used for extraction processes, um, CO2 gases, liquid petroleum gases, uh, flammable liquids such as ethanol. Um, and I think this is one of the things that impressed me most about Harvest. Uh, I've worked with Harvest since 2013 when they opened their first dispensary and first um, processing facility. And when many of the other um, people in the industry were trying as quickly as they could to get products to, to the shelf and um, using, again, the, the least expensive and, and probably not the safest methods. Harvest took a lot of time and research on the best ways to extract these medicines from cannabis. And through their research, they decided that CO2 was carbon dioxide, was the safest and healthiest extra extraction process to use for this. So again, they, they took the time, even though it was a lot more expensive, and brought the experts in to create these um, laboratory-grade settings to, again, safely process uh, cannabis. And, and that, again, CO2 is the extraction process that, that Harvest focuses on. 
And Harvest employee health and safety and community safety is a, a top priority for them. And these are the steps that, that Harvest takes to uh, ensure that for the facility and for those em employees and community. Uh, establish a safe safety program compliant with regulations and industry standards. Establish a hazard and communication program for chemicals in the facility, including safety data sheets, safe storage protocols, frequent employee training on topics including materials handling, chemical handling, personal protective equipment, um, lifting and fall protection for employees, uh, conducting regular and frequent safety inspections, conducting accident investigations. Um, I'm proud to say in the many years that Harvest has been operating these production facilities, they have not had one significant accident associated with these processing facilities, um, no significant um, community safety instances. And as far as um, community health and safety, the steps that they take is um, complying with all state and local environmental safety and health requirements for the protection facilities, complying with all state permitting requirements, especially those pursuant to fire and life safety. And again, through all these processes, Harvest coordinates with um, local um, health departments, fire departments, law enforcement, emergency health services. Um, they create um, procedures to re render all unusable plant products unidentifiable so other people, unauthorized people, can't have access to them. And again, they focus on CO2 as a solvent for extraction to avoid the hazards of volatile hydrocarbon extraction. Um, if any of that is used, it's handled in a permitted vented enclosure like fume hoods or in rooms that are designed specifically for that purpose. And then all products intended for sale and distribution are tested in accordance with state laws. Production batches and lots shall be labeled and traced, and test information shall be made available to the public. And if you don't have any questions for me on, on any of those processes or what's taking place at that facility or intended to take place in that facility, I'd like to introduce to you Mark Ross, who is our um, Director of Community Outreach. The, um, how yeah. much CO2 are you venting to the environment? Pardon me? How much CO2 would you be venting to the environment? Um, small amounts that are in compliance with the regulations and, and the practices, standard practices. Obviously, this has got to be in regulations to the Commonwealth. Absolutely. Because federal is not involved, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess my only question would be, um, I, I'm, I just, since the industry is fairly new, I was concerned about long-term exposure of workers to, you know, um, marijuana in general. So um, I, is there any industry way of monitoring um, workers? I don't know. I mean, when you think of radiation, everyone wears the radiation badge kind sure, of thing. Sure. So I mean, obviously, that's what I'm thinking of. But I didn't know, since the industry is kind of new, what um, what's out there, what, what is happening along sure. those lines? Well, the very nice part about cannabis and working in the cannabis industry is that from a toxicity perspective, this is a very, very safe plant. I mean, we just don't see um, toxicity exposure issues like okay. with liver damage, kidney damage. Um, it, it just doesn't happen. Um, the most common thing that we might see with exposure is that sometimes some people can get like grass hay fever type of allergies to, to that exposure. Um, but again, our employees wear um, proper protective equipment and okay. to, to minimize those types of concerns. All right, no, that's just always been my concern. Um, and um, because this is in closed space, um, from a growing point of view, the moisture um, that are around the plants, mold is another issue. Um, yeah. And so I'm assuming your grower person would be a uh, manager would be able to handle that but yeah absolutely. Uh, that would be something that I would be concerned about yeah, humidity too. is monitored very closely in okay. these growing operations because of that very concern and then the plant materials are tested um, for any types of, of molds okay. or anything that can occur in those processes okay. all right that's pretty much it then because of this processes and everything I assume our Board of Health is going to have to have special training um, again, there are codes and standards that are available to looking for these types of, of things, um, but uh, 
as far as the growing procedures, these are standard agricultural type procedures that, that we see used very commonly. Um, have, Dick, have you haven't? It's not been clarified from the state, has it? What we are supposed to do as local board of health inspections? Nobody's grown anything yet. Okay, I don't know if you guys have had your license approved yet or not to grow at the facility you have. <coughs> no, the, the uh, license is not the final license has not been okay. approved yet. But so this is a little premature. I came here expecting. A little bit different scenario. I came here, I've got documentation on the proposed bylaw changes, okay? So my main interest today is, isn't the health aspect because I've done a lot of research over the past two or three years, and even now I've been involved in this from day one. I know we've been dragging you around to meetings. <laughs> what I was focusing on tonight, or thought I was going to focus on, was to tweak the bylaw changes, we have a letter from other competing corporation that is recommending different things in the bylaw. So what I was expecting to do was to go over this bylaw thing, not tonight, but I was, you know, I'm assuming the Board of Select will want me to be the point person to tweak these bylaws and put errors and omissions in there and submit it back to the board and then the health thing would follow right up with that. You know, not that this is not a good thing, okay? But this is just a little bit premature to getting the bylaw in place. If we don't get the bylaw in place, there is no manufacturing, there is no processing, right? So we really should be focused more on tweaking the bylaw to protect the town for the interest of that and get things done. There's a few things in here. Um, I, oh, Dick, I agree with that, except I, I, the reason why I wanted um, Dick Evans to come and, and Son to come is because I, I wanted some you. explanation with, of the, the actual crossing. It's really a dead issue. Yeah, no, it because is. Because the grow issue has been approved. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are going to get approved by the state to grow. How they process it, how they transport it, then becomes our problem, okay? We have a proposal in here not to have a transporter that just transports it, okay, which could trigger uh, a warehouse or storage, which right. I don't which we don't want. want, right, okay, and those are the things that I thought we were going to address, like, tonight. Well, actually, or, I think it's, or make I, a plan to address it. Well, I think it's good to bring them up. I, I don't want to discount this at all, but I just, yeah. you know, we need to do step one before we get to step two. Well, why don't, why don't you finish, Dick, and then Dick, the other Dick, come up and we'll um, try to answer some of the questions. <clears throat> Mark, go ahead. Great. Thanks for having us. So, um, again, my name is Mark Ross. I'm the director of community outreach for the company nationally. Um, I probably have the most fun job of all um, because, can you, Dick, can you do me a favor? Just, uh, thank you. Escape, here we go. Very easy up and down. Yep. So I probably have the most fun job of all because my job at the company is to deploy resources, financial and human, into the communities that we touch, making sure that we're having a positive impact on every single community that we touch. Uh, and this community is no different. Uh, so as you all probably know, we have the host community agreement um, that we've proposed, which has a number of benefits to your fine town. Uh, first of all, we're gonna be hiring up to 50 um, local people to be working in this facility. Uh, we've also uh, committed to working with local vendors and contractors and businesses in town for all of our needs. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've already guaranteed under the agreement uh, an initial um, contribution to the city of $25,000 and then paid quarterly after we've been over open a year, 2% of gross um, wholesale revenue, which we project by our projections uh, to be a contribution of this, to the city of between $1 million and over $3 million, uh, depending on how we ramp up production and how things go uh, in this state and whether federal legalization happens and we can do interstate transport and things like that. 
Uh, there's also the potential for tax revenue um, to, the, to the city of Deerfield. And then lastly, my favorite part is I get to take all of these employees and I get to deploy them into the community and have a positive impact. Harvest, since the very beginning of our company, has been about having a positive impact on the community. We're really about three things, health, education, and community. And when we look at communities, we deploy our resources to health-based organizations because we are from the medical marijuana market in Arizona. That's where we were born out of. And we have the very first medical director in the state of Arizona now working for us. And so we like to give back to health-based organizations, human service organizations, and then the last are social equity organizations, which is becoming a, a growing discussion in the cannabis industry. So that's really what I'm here to tell you is that there's all this great stuff and goodwill. Uh, the last thing I'll leave you with is, is my job is not to make sure that we're the best cannabis company in your town or in the region. My job is to make sure that we're one of the best companies in your region where we pay a living wage, we give great benefits, we have a great culture, we're an employer of choice, we give back to the community, both financially and with volunteerism, where people look at us and say, those guys are great. They're great contributors to the community. We're proud to have them in our community. And so, again, I thank you very much for your consideration and for your time. And if you have any questions about any of that, please, by all means, I'm happy to answer them. Don't worry, we'll be in touch. <laughs> okay, I'll leave my card. Mm. Oh, oh, one last, oh, thank you. We have one last thing, and that is this video about us and some of our community work. It's brief, but I think you'll get something out of it. There we go. I co-founded Harvest in 2011, and every day since then, I've witnessed the relief, comfort, and joy that cannabis provides our customers, and it really puts things in perspective. Harvest isn't just a business. It's an opportunity to improve people's lives, but to make the biggest impact, especially in this industry. You not only need a strong business model, you need a strong regulatory framework to ensure that together, we create a safe and secure marketplace for consumers. As a lawyer, I appreciate how regulation is essential for our collective success. And Harvest is fully committed to operating within the bounds of different cannabis policies across the United States. To date, we've conducted well over a million transactions, been inspected more times than any other cannabis company in the country, and yet we've maintained an impeccable compliance record. In fact, I'd like to think our focus on compliance is a key reason we've been awarded more licenses than any other cannabis company in the U.S. And this commitment to excellence applies to everything we do at Harvest. For example, our cultivation and manufacturing facilities turn out world-class products because we go above and beyond with our testing. Every extract, plant, and product we make is validated not only by our in-house quality control lab, but by accredited third-party labs as well. Of course, making the best cannabis is meaningless if it doesn't reach the people who need it. So our retail experience puts extra emphasis on personalized service. At Harvest, we don't train our staff to sell cannabis. We train them to educate our patients. This way, patients feel empowered to choose the cannabis that's best for their individual needs. At Harvest, we all share the same strong desire to improve people's lives, which means we don't just wait for people to come to us. We're active in our communities and have provided over a million dollars in assistance to patients fighting illnesses and chronic pain. We founded our own nonprofit foundation for children suffering from epilepsy and we're partnering with The Last Prisoner Project to help with workforce reentry and education for those who've been in prison over minor cannabis charges. And then of course, there's significant job creation. The average harvest dispensary creates 25 new well-paying jobs in the community, while each of our cultivation facilities create as many as 200. And of course, we're absolutely committed to hiring a staff that's as diverse as the wonderful communities we serve. So I speak for everyone at Harvest when I say we're extremely proud of what we've been able to accomplish thus far. But we're even more excited about the enormous potential for good that's still out there waiting to be realized. Together, we can make that happen. Uh, well, thank you very much for hearing us tonight. And uh, I, I, I think I disagree with, 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 with Dick that uh, I think it's appropriate to, to review the, the public health issues at this point. 
so that when we talk with the planning board and the, and the voters and the residents of the town and ask them to uh, uh, consider allowing uh, product preparation at this site, they'll know what we're talking about. And that's, uh, I agree, actually, yeah. Dick. Yeah. And that was our purpose of being here yeah. tonight. So, again, so it, forgive me because I wasn't on the board with the original application was, are you thinking of a retail? No. No. So no. this is strictly... This is strictly for product preparation. Putting okay. a, a, a building like the one we showed in the picture at the facility at, at Mill Village Road. Okay. Yes. To do wholesale yeah. preparation. I, yeah. I, I didn't see the original app, so... Um. So Dick, why don't you come up um, and, and talk yeah, about... I don't want to disagree with our illustrious lawyer, but <laughs> the function of the board can't forget the fact that this is a proposal to the planning board. So yes. Yeah. I appreciate the proposal they did, but they're going to have to do the exact same thing again in front of the planning board. Oh, no, I, is, I agree. This is just a preliminary thing, and I, I really think we need to tweak the whole thing with the definition, the, the zoning districts. I think the board has to have a perfect understanding of what's going on. Okay. Well, Dick, why don't you come up and, and let's well, just go. We're not going to be able to resolve that in 15 minutes. Okay? You, you don't think so? No. You have more? I mean, you. Well, we have other people here that I'm assuming another person is going to stand up and put some input in here. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling. Okay. And I just think we need I don't want to delay anything. I don't want to do anything. But I don't want to rush too fast. I'd like to ask for, if the board wants me to, I'd like to ask for a week to go over this, make the presentation to the three members of the board so they are 100% on board with, so hopefully there's no errors or omissions. As you, as you understand, I've been on the Board of Health for almost 20 years. I was on the zoning board for 10 years. I was on the Board of Selectmen. So I'd like to tweak this up as much as I can to get it so we don't go to the planning board and have egg on our face that we made a mistake of some kind. When when is this supposed to be at the planning board? I don't know. Dick, do you know when I it's? Don't, I don't know. Okay. We haven't set um, a date because you guys haven't sent it to the planning board. So yeah, they have. Yeah, They've no, we did. The planning board? Yes, we forwarded it to the planning board well, to start the process. But that doesn't okay. matter because we could go. We could look over this on November six. Can we? Can, would you be prepared for November six? We could put it on the agenda. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Okay, we could go I, over it and then have some kind of presentation on it. I, I, I just want to make sure everything is equal through the whole town. I don't want to yeah. wind up with a loophole where we wind up with uh, three vaping shops in downtown next to the restaurants or something like that. So we just want to make sure that we're 100% on board. Right. Lisa's reviewed the bylaw, right? change yeah well um, Jack, no. what were you expecting no, tonight okay. to happen no we had some just what happened okay so no we don't, don't need to get into those land use issues okay you don't have this is a public health thing okay yeah. well the public health thing i'm not as concerned about it as part of the board because i've got background in checking up other places and other things yeah. so it's well, really well i I'm, i actually appreciated it i i pushed it for him yeah. to come because I wanted to know exactly what the processing okay. was. Yeah. So and I also wanted to follow up with DPH to find out, try to find out or get a commitment from them. What are they doing on the state level? Because some of the, some of the money, they, there's, they're taking money off the top because they're supposed to be doing some of the inspections. Well, I, you know, that hasn't been defined. And Dick and I have been to a ton of meetings, well, I, and we every time we try to pin them down, what are they actually going to do? At DPH is responsibilities, and what our responsibilities are on the local level. We've gotten no real commitment. So, part of it is I don't think they've really decided, and that keeps changing. Well, don't get me wrong. This is very well written. Okay, and it's something we absolutely need to do is to update our town bylaws for this. Okay. Yep. So, don't have a problem with that at all. It's just a couple things we should be tweaking. I know there's somebody else here at the meeting that's got a couple different opinions, and I think it should just hear it out, and then take a week to put it back on a piece of paper, highlight it, give it back to the board, and the board can send another copy to the 
planning board. For okay. Version. I, I wasn't aware of any of the comments, so could you just go over some of the comments? Well. Or what? Do, how do you want to do it? I don't know. Have they set a planning board hearing date yet? I guess not. I, so. I hate to bring this. I, I, I'd like rather. I, I'd like personally. I'd like to see the board be on board with all the things 100 percent. And when they go to the planning board, you got 99 percent of the things answered for the planning board. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, I don't know. How do you feel That's about why it, David? Well, yeah, we've got to have all our ducks in a row because, you know. That's all I'm trying to do is make sure it's it, cleaned uh, up so that the ducks are all in a row. Yep. No, it's just, fine. you know, here again, it, you're being a little vague because we don't know what kind of changes you're talking about right at the moment, but right. obviously um, you can meet with the board and we'll, we will go over that, so. And it's. I, I didn't realize it was going to planning board that quickly, otherwise I would have highlighted this 100% with any little tweaks or any little questions for you to ask before, okay. we, were, before we went there. So. I mean, I, I just approach this as, as really as an agricultural processing, just like we would, you know, if you had lavender or something. I don't want to slow the process down, I just want to okay. clean it up. All right. Well, we've had large processing plants for marijuana in, in town before. Now somebody popped up. <laughs> <laughs> right, Blake? <laughs> Good evening. My name is Michael Alio. I represent Deerfield Naturals. And I'm here tonight with Matthew Plotkin, who's the operations manager of Deerfield Naturals, which you probably already know, and a resident of Deerfield. I just wanted to confirm that you got the letter uh, that my firm submitted. I, I know. Um, I don't want to take much time based on Dick's comments, I think maybe at the November 6th meeting would be the time to feel this stuff out more, but we provided feedback about the proposed changes to the bylaws. Um, Dick, who represents uh, the applicant who's here this evening, was kind enough to send me the proposed bylaws in advance of the last select board meeting and ask for feedback. And uh, regrettably, I didn't get him feedback in time. Uh, we only took a cursory look, but upon further look, there are real concerns that we have about, we agree with a lot of the bylaws. We agree that it's really helpful uh, that certain changes have been made. We appreciate Dick taking the time to, to draft the new bylaws, but there are very specific things that we have reservations about. I'm happy to address those this evening. Uh, I'm not sure that it's not premature. I, I think. Uh, I can go yeah, I, I would rather just look at it. My, sure. my main concern about the zoning change was I wanted to make sure that the, um, the minimum f distance between a step, retail establishments was only in the town of Deerfield, yes. not. We agree with, we, we look <laughs> at change. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you do. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we're, we're, you know, promoting that to solve that issue. Yeah. Um, and the other stuff, like I said, was more uh, from a, we just needed to know what, exactly what was happening. Sure. Um, this is a Board of Health meeting, and I think our issues are probably more or less outside of the scope of the Board of Health. But we are here this evening, and I'd be happy to go through the points briefly if that's helpful. But I think you just indicated that you'd rather take a review it. Um, I, I will just say that I do not believe in social consumption establishments, so you don't have to waste a lot of time on that because I don't feel that we want them in Deerfield, so, you know, sure. just looking at that part of your letter. Yeah, our preference would be that it just tracks with state law, but I appreciate the concern. Um, just going from there up, we just we don't see the need to limit um, um, marijuana transportation. There's going to be production here and potentially retail. So to eliminate the possibility of having um, marijuana transport or businesses in town, the current overlay district doesn't uh, speak to it, doesn't uh, eliminate the possibility. It just it's intuitive, makes intuitive sense. The, the second point here is about the various level of cultivators. And Frankly, I still don't completely understand the proposed changes. There are proposed changes to the bylaws, and there's a summary of the proposed changes. And I, I, I can't make those two things uh, go together. But reading the summary of the proposed changes, 
uh, it would seriously curtail the ability to engage in certain activities within the overlay district, but then allow them outside of the overlay district. And that just, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm not sure that the actual amendments to, to, the, um, to the bylaws that are proposed necessarily do that, but that's the type of thing I would like to feel out a little bit more to make sure that whether intentional or not, that's not being, uh, that that's not the effect of these changes. Okay. But well, we can work on them. There's a November 6th meeting, is that correct? Yes, November 6th is our next meeting. We'll just put this on the agenda. We'll have it sorted out. We'll meet, I'll meet with Dick and um, go over this and we'll sort this out. Okay. So, um, I, I so we'll have some discussion November 6th then and make a decision as a board. Okay. What to, you know. um, yeah, it's, you know, well, there's a lot of information for us to digest right at the moment. Here is. So, yeah. And it's just, we've got to make sure we're understanding it completely. Uh, you know, you're competing, but yet yeah, you're yeah. not. We're not opposed to their application, but the amendments to the bylaws will affect Deerfield Naturals as well as, and Matthew has told me that part of his concern are as a resident, not just as, you know. Right. So uh, if you have the opportunity to review the letter, we'll just come back on the 6th and we'll address it in more okay. detail. Yeah. Okay. But you're not going to get very far on the social consumption. I understand. I'm just saying that up No, here. I appreciate your, your frankness. I'm, I'm well, just not interested. Well, you know, Deerfield stepped up a long time ago on flavored vaping, you know, even though the state allowed it. We said no. Good for you. So it's just, you know, uh, we looking out for the public health. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm, I'm a true believer in cannabis. I'm not a user, but a true believer in it because I've seen what it does to cancer patients for epilepsy and things. Yeah. So um, I'm a very, I appreciate the presentation tonight. There are certain things in there. It's, um, you know. Um, yeah, yeah so. I have no problem with some stuff, but. The transporter aspect, though. We don't need the transporting aspect. is something that we'll have to discuss. Yeah, I, I need to that, look into that. You know, it's got to get from point A to point B at some point in time. And then the cultivation aspect, we just don't want limitations that don't currently exist in the overlay district to all of a sudden maybe exist. And to be perfectly honest, it's confusing mm -hmm. whether or not the limitations are actually yep. included. That, that's why I want to look at it, because sure. I, I, it's not something I can absorb right away. Is there anything that's helpful for us to do in advance of the next meeting that you um, request? It doesn't look like anything. It's just definitions and um, I think I, Dick can get all the information with, okay. from, with me. Um, I, I wanted more clarification on the processing tonight. That's why we had this Board of Health sure. presentation so that we could absorb what was ha going to happen because I had in my mind, like I said, this was just an agricultural product kind of, you know, processing. So I, I didn't really feel like I had any issues with it, but um, I wanted to make sure. And then um, I also worked, we were just trying to get clarification from the state what, what we are actually responsible for. Um, but I don't we know. We briefly addressed some of our concerns in that very first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I Thank you. I've got a simple answer. If, if anybody wants to call me and give me their viewpoints or their input on something, right? Uh, whether it's social consumption or whether it's the size of the lot or whatever, I'd be glad to listen to them on the phone, make notes, make comments, give it back to the board on the 6th. I don't, Dick, I have been going to meetings for, I don't know what, oh, it's bye. been five or six years. No, social consumption is off the table. I know. I've been I, trying I to avoid your, that. I understand your policy. <laughs> But <laughs> all I'm saying is if somebody wants to put some input into the bylaw okay. changes, okay. What about okay. having the two lawyers in a room with you and kind of mediate well, They can it. do that too if they'd like. I, yeah. They, um, you don't just have to yeah. be them. It can be other people. That's, I, don't, I don't have a problem. A yeah. Well, I think part of this is definition. And if we can sort out the definition and clarify the definitions. So the whole idea of, of the Board of Selectmen passing this on to the planning board is that it would be more organized and um, it would be uh, some of these issues had been already sorted out. So if you both wanted to get together and meet with Dick and, you know, I can try to figure out uh, when. Anybody can call me. Yeah. I'll meet with anybody anytime next before the 6th and go over some of these things. 
there's a, there's a couple little items on here I could point out that uh, you absolutely positively are not going to uh, allow it to happen in the expedited permitting district, for example. The neighbors are going to come out in droves. So, and the selectmen have control of the expedited permitting right. process, not the planning board. So, that's one of the things that I was going to highlight. Whether you want to leave that on there, take it off, change it, alter it, whatever. That's just one particular item on this list. Well, I think the reason why, Dick, that we had originally put it, um, or, or we could put it back in, is because, you know, we, we have taken possession of um, natural bakers' property. I'm, I'm not on anybody's so side. So if, if a manufacturer wants to go there be, and process. It's just, just the fact that we're just trying to clean this up right. and make sure that the town comes out on top no matter what. Okay. And the people in town. So if you want me to re do this and report back next Wednesday, which they, they No, it's two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, that's yeah. Even, that's um, plenty of time. If you could meet with them by sometime in the next couple of weeks, and then we could sit down, I or I can try to... Jointly or together, and if there's anyone I suggest else jointly. To come in yeah. You might as well have both sides there. Yeah. Right. And looking and then, at it and yeah. just, you know... I don't have a problem. And please. then... Um, just let the board know when the meeting is, and we'll try to make sure one of the board members yeah. is there as well. There's going to be no decision made for my part. It's no, we're not. We just want to open and frank discussion and make sure we're. I'm going to gather the information and give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any pros or cons, I'll let you know what the status of that is. Well, yeah. I, I want the definition sorted out because that yeah. would be something that would really slow down the planning board. So if we have all the definitions sorted out, then that just goes forwarded to the planning board and it'll be much faster. Um, I, God I forbid only have, I pity have, you to have two lawyers in the same room with you, but yeah. you know. <laughs> We're not the worst. <laughs> well, why don't you set up the meeting and I'll just, I'll just try to adjust. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. It was really nice Thank to meet you. Oh, Thank you. Chris, you have a question? Yeah. Sites uh, subscribe to international uh, quality standards like ISO 9001 or international health and safety and environment standards like ISO 14001. Um, I don't know. We comply with all of the local and state regulations and we try to exceed industry standards. So you're in compliance, but you're not, um, you're not certified by these um, global um, independent audit. I don't believe that we're certified by these specific private associations that you're talking about. I, I think that the would have to... The federal component of yeah. that would prohibit it anyways, I think. Yeah, I think that's why, because you wouldn't be able to I think have the, federal... the federal component of ISO would... I know, well, here again, I'm not a big believer in ISO because it just says you do what you do and stuff. And, but you know, as long as you have good GMP, which I believe they have, um, which is far more effective than ISO. Well, because yeah, one, you know, yeah, ISO yes. 14,000 is yes. automotive, so and I, hopefully they don't have automotive so with the pot. you're manufacturing under GMP right. standards. Okay. And 9001 is just spelling out what you do and how you do it, and saying you're complying with it with, with good GMP. That's what you should have. So, so. Wait, sir, if you're talking about 14,001 or 12,001, those are not standards that we apply per se because they are third party standards. But Correct. neither does the rest of the industry. Mm -hmm. GMP is kind of the gold standard for the okay. industry right now. Okay. Thank you. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Appreci appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it was very informative. Um, okay. Dave and. Hey, Blake. Company, why don't you come on up? And um, we're going to have our sewer rate public Just hearing. Just get up for a second. Sure. Blake. Yep. Thank you both for coming.
I'm sorry, this is so disjointed tonight. We were, You're fine. Worry, Jude, Trevor was, um, you know, going over to listen to his son sing. That's so, pretty it's pretty stuff. important. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. One of the things we talked about is um, um, taking some time to do the EDUs, and um, for this next round, right. next this next Looking time. Looking at how to slice it, yeah, in different ways, yeah, yeah. And I mean, once we get started, we'll have a more handle on some of these costs and, yep, you know what the true costs are. This isn't are. a right. I don't say a struggle, but this isn't something that is unique to Deerfield. I mean, this is, yeah. This is everywhere. So, anyway, um, yeah, no, we, we, we decided we'd take a much um, longer time to decide about the rates um, w that we could work on. That's okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Sorry. So, Dave, why don't you introduce yourself all over again? Do you want to open up the hearing? or? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, I'll open she'll the hearing. She'll take the chair. <laughs> okay. She's the next senior. <laughs> there you go. Is there, we don't have to, we just are just going to set the rates. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. So, yeah. We'll open the hearing. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if there was a something that we have to read. We're just no, going to. We can do a little hearing. preamble if you want. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a proposed motion yet. We can craft one you know at the conclusion but well we, it's uh, well we i think we um had talked about we're not interested in doing higher than five percent i think we were going to be pretty that's, satisfied that's great i mean i think just to take 5%. things backwards um yeah over the past three years um you know as the water and sewer commissioners and select board you know you've you've acted on the recommendations uh, along the way um from Kevin and Keith and uh, and us and others that have been involved. But prior to getting the USDA grant, there was the leap of faith, right? We asked you to raise your rates in advance of the project so that you could improve the eligibility, the grant percentage. Right. And it worked. I mean, you got a, uh, a generous grant from USDA that a lot of communities didn't. Your allocation for that $11 million project was more than the entire state of Massachusetts gets in any one year through USDA. So that was money that got pulled back to the national office. You competed with communities all over the country. So um, really what you're looking at now is we have three years uh, over which to implement that $11.4 million project. And the concept is that you'll embark on the design phase uh, for basically half of the remaining fiscal year. And then you'll have uh, the design concluded in fiscal 2021 and construction in 22, 23. So as we look ahead to setting this rate and the next two rates, it really kind of covers the, the full implementation of the project. And you know things can change with operating budget year to year, but right now we're recommending that um, you raise the rates at 5% this year. It just so happens that that coincides with what you need to do. And you'll likely be seeing uh, two similar increases in the two, two years after that. So, um, you know, again, the beauty's in the eye of the beholder in terms of, you know, the rate payers and everything else, but um, you're most of the way there already. So most of the, the, the pain is behind you in terms of raising the rates. So the proposal um, relative to the hearing is to raise the rate from uh, $11.75 per thousand gallons to $12.35 per thousand gallons. The, the flat fee or if you will per billing period would remain the same under the proposed rate structure right and james is here to answer any detailed questions you may have he's been living this model for the last three four years we, yeah yeah we had uh, i i really want to look at the edus and stuff like and when we get a handle on the real cost of the project we'll look at the rates what the real how you allocate yeah. the cost the unit costs yeah yeah we've talked before you i mean right now you use what we would describe as primarily a fixed rate model, but you do have a base fixed fee, that, and that's important. Um, I think, are, well, that, we, that was recommended to us to be competitive. Well, I think the benefit, yeah. right, I mean, we, I always say there's the 1080-10 the rule or the 595 rule. You're trying to make the rates fair and equitable for as 
big a portion of your users as you can. And it's really hard at the low end and the high end. So at the low end, you may have seniors, fixed income, very low water usage. If you have a flat fee per house, like many communities do, Great Barrington, for example, um, that, I don't want to say penalizes, but it penalizes the seniors and those that are on fixed income. They would all pay the same amount. Those that water their lawn in excess, you know, benefit under that scenario on the sewer side. And then the flip side of it is um, if you do a ton of irrigation and you're in the model you have where it's per gallon, you know, there's oftentimes uh, feedback from those at the high spectrum that, you know, want to consider a second meter or an offset or a cap on the winter billing period. And those are all valid options. I think we talked about them a couple of years ago when we went through this the last time. You can slice the pie however you want. I mean, you know, you, you decide what your expenses and your revenue goals are for that year, and the math in terms of how you split it up is, is completely open for discussion. But if you don't make any changes to your current structure, the 5% rate increase or the proposed consideration would be from 1175 to 1235 at the unit price. And that's 5%. I mean, it plus or minus a couple of decimal points, but let's keep the nickels even and not go to pennies on the rate structure. Okay, how much would that increase our enterprise fund contributors? About 300,000? So, yeah. Uh, as it stands, um, when we look at this, the enterprise fund is pretty healthy. Um, you know, when we started raising the rates over the past few years, the goal was to get um, at least a year's budget in reserve, which we now are in excess of. Um, there's about 1.3 million in reserve as of the last certification. Um, so with the additional funds, we could look at doing some of the sewer system capital that was recommended as the wastewater in the wastewater acid management plan. Um, you know, there's still some follow-up work, um, some things that can be fixed on the collection system side. So that's how we allocated it for this fiscal year. Um, but again, that's up for interpretation. And a portion of those retained earnings that you have right now were part of the, fi the financial formula with USDA. So when they went through their underwriting process, you know, they say, okay, we're going to give you a loan and a grant, and we want community A, B, or C to have some skin in the game. So there was some strategy to getting the, re the reserve up. You know, and in general, yeah. we said the gold standard was one year's budget in reserve. Um, and you've done a really good job the last few years. Now, that's a combination of really good planning on your part. And sometimes, quite honestly, I think Kevin and I could admit capital just never moves as fast as you think when you develop a capital plan. So... You know, in some ways, the, the wave is just kind of lagging where the rates were, were built up. But you could put a little bit more money uh, in, re in retained earnings this year. And that helped you do 555 instead of 10, 12, 15. You know, those double di when you start getting into double digit annual rate increases, that's when it starts to become. Yeah, I, I think it's very prudent to go with the 555. Yep. Um, it's just that, you know, here again, um, I want to make sure that we have enough going into the enterprise fund because the things Deerfield has always screwed up on as a town is not having a capital reserve for things. I mean, you know, I've been preaching since I don't know when, but, you know, we have a hell of a good format here in town with the South Deerfield Fire District, and nobody wants to pay attention to it. And, you know, you've got to have capital reserve to get things fixed. And you've got to be fixing things and not holding off on them. And your reserve would stay about the same at the end of next year. I mean, we didn't add anything to it in fiscal 21. It's part of the proposed rate structure. It keeps it at about 1.3. Yeah. But as the USDA model unfolds, you know, that will be a source for some of your short-term interest costs. You know, there's out-of-pocket costs with USDA up front. We talked a little bit about that this morning. Yeah. So you play banker until you close the loan with USDA, and then they reimburse you monthly for the grant. Right. right. So. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, was um, we, we want to replace some of the piping on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, do you feel comfortable with that, what we're proposing? Are we proposing enough to start that process? I, I think I would probably stay with the 555 for right now. A um, okay. couple of things obviously we need to keep in consideration is is our sludge disposal. Uh, I mean, that's that's killing us financially. Um, you know, every time we turn around, they seem to be getting a, another type of rate hike. Um, and then we're just running out of places to bring it to. So um, I think we'd be okay. You know, and a lot of times when people talk about replacing the lines, a lot of times you don't have to replace them. Um, you can line them. Line them, yeah. 
I'm not even sure what the cost difference is, but it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to throw a percentage at it, but I really can't. Well, especially with the depth of some of our lines. Exactly. It's a, it's a four to one ratio. Yeah. So for an eight inch pipe, it's going to cost you about two, two to 300 bucks a foot to replace it. And it's going to cost you about 50 bucks a foot to line it. Wow. So, and, and that's we, in the budget. I right. mean, you know, and, you and went we through the, you know, the state II requirements and it's in the report. And, you know, the, the goal was let's not do some huge project all at once. Every year, just keep chipping away at it. That's why I wanted to make sure that yeah. Kevin felt comfortable with this. I mean, we talked about it earlier, right. but exactly. just I th verify I think it. I, I, I would definitely recommend going to 555. Okay. Um, not only speaking as a uh, superintendent, but as a rate user also. Right. I, I mean, that's... To me, that would be more reasonable. I, I'm not. I, the the, the five stable. for this year. I mean, it's black and white, right? Because you have a budget. Just understand that there may be some things, as Kevin alluded to, that are outside of your control. So it's possible next year's a four. It's a six. Like let's just. Well, know, that's why I want to take some time to look. Single digit, uh, you know, right. rate adjustments, mm -hmm. and let's let's, hope that let's look at it and then try to be possible. more realistic for next yeah. for the next time. Okay. And All that, right. That doesn't assume that the next phase is advanced. I mean, that's a whole nother. We go through this each time you, you know, you implement. You go from one step to the next. It's just because right. you know everything we're talking about is we're not talking about expanding the system at all. Nope. Which is another cost. You know, uh, that could be significant. Well, it will be significant because you know incorporating Route Five and Ten and maybe parts of Mill Village or whatever into it. One of the advantages of doing something like that, though, is is it, it spreads it out. I mean, it's it's like Dave said in the past. It's it's simple numbers. You know, if if you've got a hundred people that have to pay a certain bill, and you can turn it into one hundred and twenty people to pay the same bill, it's going to be cheaper all the way around. Yeah. So, um, and and to be honest with you, I I think if you were to go ahead and and line out on five and ten, that's going to take your land valuations and it's going to bring them right up. It's going to bring you some better um, um, commercial people coming in. Well, there's which, a lot of people you, that aren't moving to town because they don't have a sewer system. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to change it into Route 9. Right. But, you know, with controlled growth and looking at things, it's, you know. The example is maybe, you know, Hatfield, south of Church Street on Route 510. I mean, that sewer went in 15 years ago, and it looks different. It's not Route 9. Yeah. But, you know, the town was able to kind of selectively develop that, and, mm -hmm. you know, to the to the taste of the residents, et cetera. Yeah. So, you know, it's a lot of things that we can do to make things better. And it's, you know. So I think there's consensus on all five at 5%. Yes. Okay. I, and like I said, we're going forward at 5% seems good to me, too. I mean, you know, that seems reasonable. And people should not be upset about that. Because like you said, most of the rate increases have already come and gone. Especially yeah, it means about for the, the average customer. You know, the, your bill was going to double next year. No, it's a little less than 3 bucks per month for the average residential yeah. customer is the, is the change. Yeah. You know, if you do the math from 769 to 803, 34 bucks a year, call it 3 bucks. you know. Um, yeah. That's usually, if you show things on a monthly basis, it starts to resonate more with people because we all get bills every month. So, but that's the order of magnitude for, for, the, for the proposed adjustment. Chris, okay. did you have a comment? Yeah, just a quick follow-up on that. If I understood right, the um, kind of reserve fund for capital improvement is at about 1.3 million. And then that's for throughout the whole system, right? Because we've talked a lot about the ca upcoming capital project down at the South Deerfield. This is for the whole system. This is for the whole system. And if, if roughly a, how much is budgeted for the next year of that type of capital improvement? Um, I, it's this would this rate generates how much about three hundred? There's a uh, there's about two hundred thousand dollars in the budget for, you know, collection system capital and capital. I would describe as having a definition ranging from recurring capital, fixing fixing old stuff. That's really what what you're driving at. But, you know, you've invested in. Um, an asset management plan that identifies the pipes and manholes with the highest return on investment. And I think, you know, year one in this upcoming year, the goal is to start going after some low lying fruit, you know, and anything you can do to tighten things up just means less rainwater, groundwater coming to the plant. And then it just gives you that much more flexibility to deal with the heavy load that you already have. 
plus, as you mentioned, Dave, you know, some of the potential development that, that could be accommodated. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, the entire collection system's been evaluated, and um, I think it's about a 10-year CIP that's been, you know, capital improvements program that's been identified, and it's a little subjective, right? You have a massive list of old pipes, and you say, how much can we tolerate, you know, annually? And I think we kind of settled on 200000 is nice. You know, that may mean one year you do nothing, and you put a half-million-dollar job out every three years, or you chip away at it. And some of it's chipping away, and checking to make sure you prioritize your flushing budget and everything else. But it's your gold standard relative to how you're managing your collection system. I mean, we pay a lot of attention to the two treatment plants because they're, they're big and the dollars have a lot of zeros. Um, but your collection system, you've got your good stewards. It's just old pipes. Just start chipping away at them. Yeah, so the current reserve cover is about four years. So one screwed up. Yeah. System. Well, but, yeah. You, you can, things, bad things can happen in a hurry. Right. As you just pointed out, but you know, we feel a lot better now than we did four years ago when it was. Oh, yeah. I think it was three hundred thousand when we started this. Right. Yeah. Yes. Which that was. That's like a. That's gone overnight. That's why the rates jumped up so much. I mean, to be competitive to get the grants, we had to have more in reserve. Yeah. And and the now rates, the goal is to establish. And we're in the lower bottom yeah. now. Of the, instead of the bottom bottom, we're in the middle bottom of the rates across the state. Where we were, we were laughed out of being competitive but again. But we weren't able to get We weren't the, able the to get any. I mean, because at that point in time, DEP said, you know, it's, um, I'm probably putting words in their mouth, but the bottom line is, is just because you have failed to protect yourself, I'm not going to bail you out for free. Right. So. You, you, you go ahead and you put some, like Dave says, you put some skin in the game so everybody knows that, you know, we understand that. Now you understand that this is where you need to be, um, and this is where we're at at this point in time, and that's why we're able to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your opportunity for those new customers obviously comes when you get to phase three and four. I mean, if you ever get to that point and decide to build a pipe from old to south, now you open up a quarter with a pipe. Like it, you know, so the, the downside is the capital comes sooner. The benefit is over time, the denominator changes, the number of customers grows, and exactly. you spread those costs out over a broader population. But the plant's capable of handling. That's the beauty. Correct. I mean, South you know, Deerfield. you've got the infrastructure in place. It just. But even Old Deerfield's only utilized, what, 25, 30%? Uh, I'd say probably. Old probably. Deerfield has less. Well, it less, has less, less, less room in the tank to, you know, and the condition yeah. is. In some ways, you know, that, that plant is in worse shape, but, you know, you, mm -hmm. that's why you do things on a unit basis. What's got the highest return on investment? And yeah. South Deerfield's your lifeblood for, you know, growth and everything that could happen in the system, the majority of it anyways. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because what's killing us in Old Deerfield right now is he only has for their, their clarifier, you, know, you think about the clarifier that we have, the large one we're looking at to, to rehab, um, is huge compared to what they have in Old Deerfield. Now, obviously, you know, you're looking at your flows different different flows but what is in old deerfield is is not adequate it's it's way too small um these guys struggle on a daily basis to make sure that we we stay within regulations um that's only during the school year right normally during the school year summertime you know it backs off in pretty good shape but you know once again you know here's my public announcement i mean we are getting more and more garbage into our plants um and the bottom line is, it doesn't come out of your body, and if it's not toilet paper, it doesn't belong in the toilet. And realistically, some of this is because we have, quote unquote, poisoned ourselves by putting all this garbage, which is killing our plant. I mean, granted, you know, we still needed the upgrades regardless, but the bottom line is, is, is why, what, if you cut yourself, you're gonna keep putting salt in it, you're gonna keep putting, you know, I, I just don't understand people. Why, why are we continually doing this? We're doing it to ourselves. I know. And, and it's the people that are doing it, we're, we're the ones that are paying. So it's like, I, I just, it just blows my mind that we're continually doing this. No matter how much we put out, the, the notices we put out with the, with the bills, the, the talking about it all the time, you know, the outreach that we've done. And, and it's it literally, it's gotten worse, not better. So. I know. Especially in old Deerfield. Really? Yeah. 
We should, we need to. Those, those big totes, they're, they're filling one of those, at least one of those a day. So where is it coming from out there? It's coming from um, the nonprofits and the handful of residents that are up there, which would be the schools, Eagle Brook, Bement. Well, and once again, you know, that's, that's, we, they say, you know, um, but it's like, here, let me put it another way. We tell you not to speed, but everybody speeds. It's, it's, you keep, you can continually tell the people, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But unless you put some type of a screen at the end of their pipe and their pipe plugged and it flooded their place, they're not going to care. I mean, I hate to put it that way, but that's the way it is. So, I mean, we're going to continue, obviously, with the outreach to try and make sure that people understand that the stuff they're putting down there is absolutely killing us, but, um, and we can only do what we can do. Well, we, we need to, we should reapproach the schools again on that. I didn't realize that Old Deerfield was getting to be a problem. Yeah, it's going to be, he's, that is fairly he, he's, he's, I tell you what, the people that are over there, Dennison, he's definitely making his money's worth. Um, that kid, really, really works very hard to make sure that everything that's happening there is above board and we're staying within regulations. We're not breaking, um, breaking permit. All right. It's close, mm -hmm. but we're still underneath the radar, not by much. Okay. All right, well, we should, we'll make some effort, Kevin. Yep. Um, James and, and Dave, that's fine. Uh, thank you. Do you have any more questions? Okay, I make a motion to um, increase the rates to $12.35 from eleven seventy-five, dollars which is approximately a 5% increase. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, it, thank you. Perfect. No, thank you. Thank you. Great. I really appreciate Have a good it. Night. Thank Thanks. you for waiting. I'm sorry it was You're going to give Trevor up. a hard time, right? <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah. The next time we have a, a meeting that you're here, I got some things I want to discuss with you. Okay, look forward to it. Because the, I understand you've got a slightly different work uh, schedule than us, so you let us yeah. know when, when it's good for you. And my grandfather was on the board of Slackman when they originally put in the sewer system, so. Nice. <laughs> the torch has been passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right. being nice to a local contractor, that's why we have pump station on Captain Lathrop, because they agreed to raise the system in front of Steve Barrett's house. Ah. because the contractor was running out of money and oh. it was a local contractor. A little history. Yeah. Uh, because it's not much of a great difference. It's only about like six feet, right? Yeah. The lift, yeah. But the original system was designed all gravity from the top of Long Hill all the way back to the sewer treatment plant okay. with no pumps. That makes sense. Yeah, because that captain... We looked at it a few times. I remember trying problem. to see if we could convert it. Yeah, it's a long run though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, well look forward to our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. You guys good with me? Yes, Kevin, thank you. Cool. Um, I just want you to know that um, Rich Massey is going to meet with us sometime. I, I will not have a Thursday date. He's from DOT okay, very on good. Complete Streets and the MVP program because we need to coordinate that. Okay, very good. So I, yeah, we just, connected, just but. Just the Thursday is the month of. Next yes. month is. Right. Every Thursday I'm out with that OSHA training. Uh, yeah. So I, I, that's what I told him. I said, we, we don't have a date, but you couldn't meet Thursday. So. Okay, very good. But I, I did connect with him, so we should be okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, the last time I saw those two, it was in Superior Court, and they were on the other side of them. <laughs> um, the only thing we have left is um, we just we have updates. Um, the CIPC letter, I, I understand it hasn't gone out. So we need to um, make sure Diana gets that out. Because um, the department has to have, to have their capital improvement plan in, you know, any request by December 1st yeah. or 2nd this year. Yeah. Because that's a Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we also have to reiterate the postings that aren't. Oh, yes, the postings for, um, I heard that, again, thank you for checking, Dave. The postings for the assistant town administrator 
and um, the administrator have not happened. So um, we need to make sure they happen and John Pachor can receive the applications. Um, I can let him know or you can let him know, Dave. Okay. One of us can let him know that he's on the hook. Yep. I'll try um, to catch up with him tomorrow if I can. All right. Tell, uh, just let him know that we're, we're letting we're assigning him that job. Um, the update on the 350th um, committee, it's moving along. Um, there was a little bit of a panic because the 1673 date, this Barbara had come up with the state saying that we were incorporated in 1677, but um, Peter Thomas had done such excellent resource a research that the sources that he used to determine that 1673 is our correct date, um, the state ended up um, referring to those dates as well um, as and using those as sources. So um, as far as I know, the dates have been uh, fixed. Um, is there anything that you wanted to update at all, Dave? No. Okay. No. Ralph, did you want to? Talk to us. I, I'm always uh, interested in commenting, but I don't want to waste anybody's time. I had thought there might be an opportunity to talk a little bit about an overview of the sewer treatment business, and, and not in detail, but uh, you know, I just thought I could have some helpful comments to the town. Um, well, we um, have the timeline. We're going. We're going out to bid again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Keith, our um, plant operator, has come up with um, a solution for the temporary clarifier, the temporary treatment. He's going to take responsibility um, for that, and we think it will happen for under $50,000. So we're going to go back out to bid for the clarifier, just a straight clarifier, um, in the, hopefully the first week in November. So we'd be opening up the bid the first week of December, and um, therefore we'd be moving along. We'll try to get DEP to adjust our um, compliance date to like October-ish versus September, just in case something happens weather-wise. You never know what could happen, but um, the, still the intention is to be able to replace and fix the clarifier in the driest months, which is really June and July. So. Hopefully, that will still happen. Um, we're going out for engineering. Dave submitted a final report um, based on what we're going to do now um, as far as, um, you know, commitment with, with USDA. So we're, we're doing the original phase one and phase three are now phase one and two. We're, we're renaming them down to the South Deerfield um, we're still focusing on the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. It's just going to be now phase one is $11 million um, that we're being financed through USDA and um, the grant. And we're, phase two is the additional $7 million or potentially $7 million or $8 million, whatever it ends up being. We're going to um, apply for in June we're targeting June because we want plenty of time before the federal fisc fiscal year um, in September and is September 30th. So we want to be ready for the September 30th deadline um, to get in line for the second phase financing and hopefully another grant that they will be happy with us and we will get another grant and be able to do the second part. And, and that's why we were setting the rates. Um, we feel that the 555, in other words, we have three more years of increases, 5%, 5%, 5%, and then it, everything should be done um, as far as the rate increases. Um, but we are gonna look, take some time to look at the EDUs and you know, take some time and looking at there's different ways to structure. I just want to make sure we're not, we can do everything we can to our low-end users 
because um, we have a lot of elders that are on fixed income and you know are using the, that are the low end users. So w we want to make sure we have the, the most um, appropriate rates for our seniors for sure. And um, so we're looking at we're going to take some time and um, we'll have a better ha handle on what um, true costs are because some of the bidding will have come back and um, we'll have a better handle on the costs. So maybe, you know, instead of 555, we can look at 54, 53, something like that. You know, we're, we're trying to come up with some more thoughtful um, rates, but worst case scenario, we're going for 555. And then that should be, in, we're generating enough money to cover everything that we intend to do. Um, so and here again, part of the rationale, Ralph, is well, you being the businessman that you were, knowing that proper PMs and everything have to be done, and so we have to have the capital reserve to be doing a lot of that. And a lot of that was not in place. And that's caused some of the problems that we have now. That, that touches us on the very point that's on my mind. Uh, as you know, I got involved with the DPW because I was very concerned about the safety of the men working there. Absolutely. And about five years ago, I happened to have a tour of the uh, sewer treatment facility down here in South Deerfield. It was just a private tour, and great people, they neat and clean, but I walked away saying, oh my word, we are so outdated, it's pathetic. So my attention was drawn to sewer treatment because, again, government's job is really for the safety and the welfare of the public. And, you know, e, uh, EMS and police and fire and DPW, those are safety things. But we don't talk a lot about water supply safety and sewage treatment safety. And there lies my concern that, yes, I know if we could, if we accidentally spilt into Connecticut, it could be, what, $50,000 a day or some ridiculous number. But that's just worrying about the money. I'm still more concerned about the safety. I mean, we don't want to contaminate the river. We don't want somebody's private septic system contaminating the neighbors or going into a small river that goes to the big river. So if we think we're really responsible uh, citizens, we need to worry about the safety. And that sets aside money. I, I mean, you've got to say, what do we do to get there? And, and I've been very concerned about th this debate about the 25% that the septic, private septic people pay into the sewer. And I understand, and I'm empathetic with them, and I'm empathetic with myself being retired as well. But put the money aside. The real thing is, what is right for the town? How do we have a safe system everywhere, not just the sewer treatment plant? And and why did it get to that point? Well, it's because we as a, well, I don't think anybody in the town, in the, in the state has a, a real preventative maintenance program funded and a maintenance program funded. Two different subjects, completely different, but they're hooked together. But and we, again, that's why I mentioned the South River Fire District, because they I, do have that. I know, I know they do, David, and I agree. And, and but people need to, be educated, they've got to understand that there's a real cost to these things. But as I found in private industry, when you do that, your costs, your capital costs go way, way down in the future. And safety is improved on, on the way. So that's, that's where I come from. But then, if you have all of this treatment, whether it's private or public sewer treatment, there's a cost. And now the cost needs to be fair. And I've heard stories that Carolyn is empathetic to the, the uh, older people on fixed income, and well, I, I agree. I just want to make sure and, we're and really I agree. taking that but, into consideration. But, I, you know, I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I'm older or on that. I'm not coming from that point of view. I'm just merely saying, first, you've got to find out what is it we need to do that's smart, and are we providing preventative maintenance and, and maintenance and all of that? I think we are now, I, I Ralph. think so. But, we but, are. but regardless, when you get done, there's a cost. 
Now the, the cost should be fair to everybody, always with setting aside people that are in a, a hardship case, and I support that, I understand that. But you can't do any of this unless you truly know what your true costs are. So you need to think about, and I know, I mean, I've listened in on a lot of these programs, uh, discussions that have gone on, but we need to worry about old Deerfield, we need to worry about the pipes, and we need to worry about the infrastructure. Then you get into the, the cost. You know, where did 25% to the private sewer thing come from? I don't know, I don't even care, but the point is that, uh, what are they paying for? Now, lately I've heard, well, it's, it's the infrastructure, which I think is more correct, because if the sewer system was developed because some private people in town said, hey, let's have a sewer system, then it ought to be the sewer user's problem. But I don't know what happened. But even today, even it today now, it would, it would yeah. be dictated, regardless of what that was, it would be dictated by the state, you've got to have it. So now we've got it. So. How do, uh, do six or 700 sewer users, can they afford to pay 19 million for an upgrade? Uh, it's a lot of money to me. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe the town does have responsibility, some responsibility to that cost because it's good for the public safety, number one, it's good for business, number two, and so forth. So there is a payback to the private people, but I'm not so sure that all of the people in the town are on agreement and understand. I don't know if it's been clearly Ralph, figured you'll out. you'll never get 100% of people I, I agree. understand, you never will. But, right. but I'm just trying to make my point anyway, that you, you need to have people buy in and supportive of it. And then once it's set, then, then you move ahead with it. It's a lot like the school systems. I mean, the school cost is what, maybe 70% of our budget. Uh, all these people that don't have children, never had children, or they're long gone out of school, they're still paying for it. Well, maybe they ought to be paying for the infrastructure, the school building, and maybe those with the children that goes up and down ought to be paying for the, the user's cost. And that's where we get to the fee, because the fee ought to represent the running of the plant, the electricity, the people, the tests, the chemicals, and all of that. That's a, if you use it more, that goes up and it needs to be paid for by the, those that use it. If it goes down, then you should reduce your costs and it goes down. And the same with the school system. But um, I, I, I'm not sure that all of this is cleanly defined to everybody. I do a lot of thinking about it. And I'm really after one thing, safety. And then number two, fairness, equality. No, it never will be equal. Can't be, because we do have people on one end of the spectrum that just can't afford it. But I also support people on a higher end, big business, should they pay more for sewer? No, no, I mean, they're using it just like anybody else. There's a cost to do it, and a cost to doing it correctly, and it needs to be equally or to a fair degree judged. And uh, I think that should be the goal, but I could see quickly tonight, it doesn't, you've got to do something with the rate, and I understand that. But well, we have though, down the Ralph, road. We, you know, we we took the hit a few years ago because we, you know, we we, we set connection rates about five years ago mm -hmm. um, because we didn't have any real <laughs> rates. It was like ten yeah. bucks or something. So we set real connection rates, mm -hmm. and and we've stuck to them, mm -hmm. and um, we've raised the rates so that we were more in the middle. Yep. Um, we're still in the lower middle, but we're still mm -hmm. in the, we're mm -hmm. upper middle versus at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We were like two or three from the bottom, and and we couldn't we couldn't apply for any loans. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, we were able to secure loans, and we yeah. were also able to generate some money so that we have some match mm -hmm. for the you know capital improvements. Right. So right. I I think you know um, hopefully. In the, in the next couple of years, well, everything will be stabilized and this will be it. Yeah. Um, I mean, because well, we, we're setting up for I, replacement, we're setting up for, you know, the, the rates are high enough to generate the 300,000, which, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're putting around 200 into replacement of the pipes every year. So we, we've, we've got to pay the price for what wasn't done. Right. And everything you're talking about is about money. I know people are and really I, upset. And I understand that, it. That's the only thing people complain to you is about money. 
but I'm not coming from that perspective. I'm oh, saying I number know. one, but, safety. But this will, and, um, this Ralph, some of this stuff is safety issues. Like we're going from the chlorine, um, you know, s stuff to the UV. Yep. And that mm -hmm. getting rid of chlorine is huge. A big thing. No, yeah, there's I know. no storage, no exposure, yep. potential. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so we don't have to worry about that. That's a huge. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, the I, equipment is going to be replaced, so yeah. our, our people aren't exposed. Um, you know, to the rusty old. I mean, they're still rusty. See, uh, I think ladders and stuff like that. Right. As you know. Yeah. But those will all be replaced. We'll we'll get a, some kind of grinder so that people won't be having to go out. In the, I know. Their that zoot is a suits pathetic in the situation. The yeah. Freezing weather and but, try it, but to again, free up the stuff. I mean, that's correct. You you want to do the things that make it better, that make it safer. And all I'm saying is, when you get done, there's a cost. And yes, the, there you is try a to cost. get the best cost you can, but then you divide it up, and it needs to be equally shared by everybody on that cost, with exceptions in certain cases, of course. But uh, I and I I just think that. A lot of people would feel better about it, but I don't think somehow or other it's really expressed cleanly enough in a bulletized spread or something to to get the the message out. You know, um, because like the rate increases we just had, that's that only affects the users. Sure, it doesn't yeah. affect the non-users. That's right. Um, you know, go back into the history of back in the '30s. Here's, here again, my grandfather was on the board of selectmen at the time they started doing this. Mm -hmm. The driving force for the sewer system within the town of Deerfield was because almost every house had a cesspool. Yeah. And I don't mean a septic system. Mm -hmm. I mean they had a cesspool. I grew up in the country. I know what you mean. Yeah. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, they said the Deerfield, town of South Deerfield especially stunk mm -hmm. because a warm, humid day, that's all you could smell. Sure. Yeah, it was absolutely terrible from mm -hmm. not being, you know, granted I wasn't here in the 30s, but uh, I was raised by my grandmother, so, you know, I have a lot of history at Deerfield. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, they said, okay, we got to do something. And that's what was the driving force. And, you know, there was a Good. lot of state funds, mm -hmm. and part of the state mandate was that, you know, 75% of the cost would be by the users, mm -hmm. and 25% mm -hmm. would be for the town, which would cover the capital of... Right. Mm -hmm. Of the system, of building it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the sewer users are paying the twenty-five are part of the twenty-five percent. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, right. so if you look at that yeah. last one. In fact, I did a calculation. It's about eighty-four percent goes to the users and sixteen percent to the non. Is that it? So yeah. I wondered what that. Yeah. yeah. I knew there'd be a different. You start applying yeah. the other, but you know, it, most yeah. most mm -hmm. of the density is down here. So your eight hundred and some odd households are, you know, about a third of the households in the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, right. So, yeah, well, let's, um, uh, uh, <laughs> so honestly, the, the other, the non-users are not really paying all that much. I, I, I don't think they are, but again, yeah. I think it's education somehow trying to get the total picture out. Uh, I'm a little more tuned in only because I have, uh, watched all these programs you put on. I attend meetings. I've been involved with capital improvement and this and that and so forth, personnel and whatnot. And I, I kind of I have a pretty good feel for the town. But um, I just think that there's a lot of uh, people that are upset, and I think they have good cause, but a lot of it is because they don't have all the facts in front of them. And, and we do have an awful lot of catching up to do, unfortunately, because we never did pay attention to that. And it's just well, like the I, capital improvement. I mean, I, I think, well, you uh, know, it's not, you know, you know. People knew, the previous uh, people that ran the sewer treatment plant, but all the reports that we were getting was, were, everything, was, was okay. <laughs> everything was okay. Everything was okay. I mean, I, randomly, I don't drive down there to check on it. So all, all of a sudden, I have all this stuff happen. Yeah. It was really shocking. See, that's the sad thing. It's like in business. You, you have to hire people to manage. Oh, yeah. And you have to give those people the authority and responsibility. 
but you still got to check on it. But, and and, to you be know, fair, and yeah, it just but, falls but apart. Ralph, to yeah. be fair, what has happened or what has made this problem such a huge problem so fast is that people are using flushables mm -hmm. now. I know. And that is a relatively new trend. Yep. And that has just been in the last few years, and it's just raving, raising havoc. I know. Because we don't have a grinder. We yep. don't have any ability to handle those flushables. They're not mm -hmm. flushables. Mm -hmm. And the sewer users are complaining about the rates, but yet they're still flushing the flushables. I know. And if they stopped using the flushables right now, mm -hmm. and we never put them in the to into the system, the system yeah. we, we would have years to string mm -hmm. out these I know. repairs. I know. Yes, do I want yeah. to switch over to the UV? Do we want to... Uh, Obviously, we have to fix a clarifier sure. for DEP's mandate, but you know we're talking about a couple million dollars versus, mm -hmm. you know, 19. So people are complaining, but on the other hand, they're the ones that are forcing us to do the repairs, and that is a relatively new trend mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they, there never was flushables before. Yeah. So yes, we haven't invested into you know a capital fund which was a mistake. That's right. And nobody wanted to do it. But also the flushables has forced us to have problems with our system that right. we never had before either. You kind of go back to what is it, why is government here uh, for the safety and welfare of the public? And then as you run the, the business of the town and capital improvement and so forth, those are the things you focus, or should be focusing on. I know they fall through the cracks or get pushed aside in lieu of something else, but there's, uh, it's amazing sometimes the things, the money that gets appropriated for things, and it may be a good thing, but it doesn't really help on these things that have not been taken care of, and, uh, and nobody wants to hear it, you know. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, anyway, th that's why I came down tonight. I, I, I mean, I could talk for hours. There's a lot more on my mind than just what I've said, but, um, but that's the key to it, is that uh, we need to make sure the town is safe. And I kind of go back to the story I've told before about, you know, George Washington, his troops were dying and sick and just terrible problems and trying to fight the war and understaffed and no money. And, no, and he had the, uh, who was he, a general a lieutenant came over from France and uh, not Napoleon, but another one. And, and basically he says, George, <laughs> you haven't got any latrines. And, uh, so they dug latrines, and that whole problem just dropped right off. So it just proves the point that mm. it is a real public safety issue, and people ought to put some attention on it and, and uh, focus more of the dollars there. Yep. No, we That's are. why it's an advantage being local or mostly state, because the federal just doesn't care. No, no, they don't. No. Who, who drives our... Our responsibility here is it state or is it federal as far as regulations and water and well um, DEP is our immediate regulator mm -hmm. which is state but they have DEP reports to EPA okay for yeah. their standards I mean they so have it, to meet, it trickles down uh, right what I mean ultimately what's happening in Long Island Sound is trickling up mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. fortunately you know, we're trying to address um, like nitrogen release and stuff like that and phosphorus. And, you know, that stuff hasn't worked up past Springfield, and I don't think we're going to have to be able to, we're not going to have to deal with that, I don't mm -hmm. think. Because the EPA's cut all their regulations. You could put all kinds of crap in the waterway now. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like, I don't know. You know. Well, that's another whole discussion. Yeah. But, okay. and it's only temporary, I'm sure. Yeah. Thanks. But thank you, Ralph. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah. Um, Skip, um, we did get an email today about the personnel meeting on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, did you get? Okay. Yeah, I'll be there. I had talked. I had talked briefly with Trevor, and not so briefly with Carolyn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Skip. <laughs> and uh, well, I stopped and told Diana that I was going to make it, but I haven't seen her so. Yeah. So in any event, yeah, I figured I'd catch you tonight. Yeah. Okay. So yep. you're on board then, 6 yep. o'clock? Okay. Yep. Good enough. Well, all three of us, as far as I know, will be able to make it. And the so four of us. Okay. And, and basically, I think what we were looking at is the compensation plan we need to do something with. 
Uh, Are you talking in, about the compensation plan you'd be presenting to um, in April, or just a review in general? Okay. Well, I don't know. I right now, you know, my what I've suggested to to Diana and, and to uh, and suggest it to you is that <clears throat> even though whether people like it or not, if we take the existing plan and just Whatever we have to do to keep that plan for the next year, and then a year from now, if somebody wants to change it, let's start now looking at it, and then they can do the wholesale change. But don't try to do a wholesale change at this point in time I was just for say, this I coming was, year. I was just going to say it's going to be so hard, and we tried to adjust it last year um, to keep it current, you know, mm -hmm. to, to keep it for another year or so. If, if it's at all possible, I'd like to keep, keep I don't mind working on it for the following year. Well, that's my but point. I, I yes. It's going to be too hard to do something for April, truthfully. Oh, it's too late. We need to be able to budget uh, someplace, you know, between now and maybe we don't need to have this thing in place by January 1st, but certainly by February 1st or in January, it needs to be presented to you so that you can, and this year I would hope that the board would would vote it up or down, whatever it is. But let's let's get the vote so that well, we, we can. We already went through that hassle, so I think we're going to yeah. be okay. Yeah. And then Brenda can, uh, you know, make whatever changes that need, need to be made to the, to the budget to. Mm -hmm. As long as we're plan. going to start working on it for the following year, um, I don't think there's going to be a problem yep. this year, Skip. And then the, the question is, what other things do should we be looking at? And I wasn't going to suggest that the select board say, this is what I want you to work on, but these are the things that we, where we well, need. Well, you know how we do capital planning. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, you know, I've push capital planning yeah. and the importance of capital planning, you know, because we have had years where we've had nothing. Um, I, I would really like us to look at the jobs, have a cycle of looking at the jobs. Are the jobs changing because, you know, of technology or mm -hmm. change of operation or whatever? Because our job descriptions, you know, all of a sudden there's a vacancy or somebody leaves or retires, then we have to go through this huge, laborious situation. And it just, we should have some kind of mechanism to update the job descriptions based on our change in operation or change in technology or something. There should be some way to do this. Everybody must, there must be something out there. I don't know what it is. Um, and I've actually, I was on the uh, MMA, um, conference call today and I actually did bring it up because I knew we were having this meeting on Monday and um, so th they're supposed to be looking at it and see if there's somebody out there that has some kind of mechanism that renews or, or reviews the job descriptions on a cycle but um, I, you know they're just this is just so um, unwieldy yeah I agree, I agree. The every process time we down. turn around somebody leaves and all of a sudden we need there. And it's months. I mean, it's just months. Just but the changes that we, you know, people want to make are, you know, it's just not going out and, re and hiring somebody to replace that person. It's, you know, they want to reorganize the entire half the town. Uh, so it would be very you know, nice if we could do something different. Yeah, because there's obviously we're not utilizing some of our personnel the best that we could. You know, um, take Kevin. Mm-hmm. How many hours a week does he do, spend doing clerical work? It's yeah, ridiculous. I, I don't know, but you know, it's like you know. Why? So he should yeah. be looking at somebody for 15, 19 hours a week mm -hmm. to doing clerical over there. So he doesn't have to be doing it. He can focus on what he's supposed to be doing. Chris, thank you for coming. You know, um, because you know, there's a lot more to his job than that. I, yeah, I don't want him. Or I wouldn't want him sitting there, you know, playing with the bills. And that's um, what he does. It, it's Almost thing. every day he's yeah. doing that. And it's just, okay. It, his time could be a lot better utilized. 
I mean, if somebody has to play with the bills, he's got two, he's got two foremen. Let them play with the bills. Well, even them, they, it's, even they shouldn't well, be doing. No, but do. we can have some type of clerical or administrative yes, assistant yes. there doing that stuff for them. And you know, the foreman can be out doing what they're supposed to be doing, and you know, between everything that. But my point was, kick it down if you can. Don't, oh yeah. So. I, I, well, somebody still has to be responsible, and Kevin takes on a huge amount of workload of this. There should be some, some other. There should be some way to delegate, and, mm -hmm. and and that's the position that we're looking at right now too. So, um, you know, the uh, if Mike retires, so trying to you know, but it would be nice to upgrade some of these. I don't want to say upgrade, change because you you could downgrade some jobs too. So, um, you know, based on what's happening or what's available through technology or whatever, or change of operation. Um, you know, it just might, you might not need that job anymore. Um, so we should be able to uh, um, have the ability to have some flexibility to, to um, adjust to that without having to spend Yeah, and, and that paperwork, work. you know, I, would make sense to me at least to bring Brenda into it and uh, get her two cents worth. Well, we need, Kevin needs more back. For sure. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you so much for organizing this. And we'll, we are all three of us to make it now. Good. Right. So, you know, I didn't, didn't expect that we would, you know, end up with this detailed plan, but at least some, gym, because <clears throat> no one on the committee has any experience. It's not that you've got holdovers. I'm the closest thing to a holdover. And it was six years ago, I think, that I got off the committee after being on for two years. Uh, but well, no one else. We should be able to figure out. Everything. So yeah. So especially if we're not redoing the comp schedule for until the following year, yeah. so that we can set up a time frame. We just we need, we should set some intermediate goals so that we know that mm -hmm. we're on time um, and not rushed. Um, so that would be fine. Dave remembers a little bit of, <laughs> of how painful that was before. So mm -hmm. um, setting it up for 18 months out is a lot different than, you know, six months. I, I just, that's just too tight. And it's too yeah. much controversy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that already. We'll, we'll, see you, we'll see you on Monday. Yep. I will take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. And I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs>